Welcome, welcome, welcome to Dope Check, episode 15, featuring me, Ace of Stocksman, featuring Tactical Rab, and the EU GOAT, Trey Zero. Guys, how are we feeling today? What a day. Crazy solar eclipse outside for me and Trey right now. Super We're going for like three, four hours right now. I don't think the sun's coming back out anytime soon. <laughs> but what a day to be alive. The world's about to end. The apocalypse nearly happened in America. The COD pros are mind blown at what they've just witnessed today. All of their brain cells clamping together. And honestly, all the brain cells in the league still can't come up with a good GA system because the drama's everywhere. Clace is being a snitch. Dashi's going at it with the other pros. Is he cheesing? Is he not? I don't know. But the league matches are finally back, baby. It's been a good two-week break. To be fair, it's been good to have this bit of a break so they can actually figure some shit out with the map set and everything. And we've got a lot to dive into. What's good, Trey? Boy, oh boy. If today wasn't already great, Pred also asking why is it so dark in Dallas right now has topped it off just nicely. Secondly, um, yeah, Clayster, Clayster's been on a good old snitch. Um, you know, I think he's, he's decided he's had enough. He's had enough of the way people have been talking and he's decided, you know what? I'm 30 plus years old. I don't give a fuck about you anymore. I'm going to snitch. <laughs> <laughs> Which respectfully, I like it. And yeah, this, this GA stuff, it's, it's getting a bit tedious now. We've got four days before matches start and no one knows what the fuck's going on. No one's got a Scooby. So, I don't like where we're at, really, because I already know what this show is going to be talking about. Because guess what next week's show is going to be talking about? The GAs. <laughs> the GA Please system them, continues, right. continues, and continues. But before we get to the GAs, let's talk about the Challengers Cup, and then let's get into the GAs. Let's spice it up a little bit. Let's jump to the screen here. We have our NA Challengers Cup champs beating fc black which was very interesting so i have words on that as well but temp prolude flames and capsule are your champs reactions hey, trey, cap, let's go trey rab reactions to this team i got something but i, I need to hear it from you boys first no donny temp finally won something in challenges which is good to see unfortunately came at a pretty bad time because when you really want to win is at the bloody major because right now no teams are making changes that's unfortunate my boy EQ Loot back up there at the top of uh, the challenger side. This guy, his headset is on another level. <laughs> Those are my comments. And also maybe my Flames boy, needs to be in the league. Yeah, Flames, LAG, you know, if they weren't actually good at LAN, I'm sure he'd be on the team. But unlucky for him, they are a top six LAN team every time they fucking go there. So, you know, that's got to suck. You know, watching him go one and six online every fucking season and then boom. Now's my time to come in. Never mind. They're beating everyone on land. The top six. So, you know, it's nice to see him consistent. And then, you know, we've got, we've got the boy Cap, you know. Ace has been vouching for him for a while, and he's just come on. And, you know, it's, it's nice to see. Uh, you know what? It's nice to see Donnie winning. That's what I like to see. You know, I've had, I've had my... Me and Donnie have had some bits in the past. I'm sure Rab's made a video on that at one point in his time. Remind um, me of the beef? Nah, nah, it's all good. <laughs> Let me search then. Basically, <laughs> basically, I'm gonna say, oh, yeah, I'm happy for Donnie for winning this. It's also, uh, this comes at, the, at a point when Spart was dropped basically from this roster and they swapped in Donnie, and now the team has won. So it's very unfortunate for Spart, I will say as well. Um, also, big cap, yeah, I have been vouching for him. Again, absolute piecer, last stage in the qualifier, in the challenger's entire stage qualifier, top KD. Um, Jody Steve gets picked up. He does not get picked up, but he was the number one guy. So I'm happy to see this team win. FC Black losing. Asim goes back to that team. They lose. Dylan Rex loses. I'm sure there's some people that are pretty, pretty mad about Dylan Rex losing, as the TL knows. But very excited, very excited for this team to continue. Um, I think one of the things I like about this too is it spices up challengers. And multiple teams are winning now, right? You have the gunless team winning the major at the event. Now you have this team beating FC Black. FC Black isn't just dominating and looking unbeatable. It looks more open, more flowing, and, and a lot more guys gunning for that top spot. So I'm happy to see challengers going this way, shifting this way. 
Uh, Rab, were you able to locate this beef that they're referring to? I imagine it's New York Subliners related, but I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, well, basically, listen, me and Don didn't get along. Um, you know, he basically said, are you an AR or a bitch? I said, I'm an AR, of course. Um, Damn. And yeah, just started from there, and then boom, I got dropped because Bruh. I speak differently to them. And Damn, um, that's crazy. Yeah, you know, my and accent's they a bit different. You, so, yeah, yeah, and then I smoked them all year, so fuck them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> speaking of yeah, speaking of the EU's coming back and saying fuck them, going to also the Challengers Cup uh, EU champs. We have Vortex, Wee Man, Hixie, and Mythics winning the EU champs. Uh, I'm going to throw this over to Trey. Trey, reactions? They are dominant. Um, they are doing what FC Black can't do. Um, now they just need to win a major. That's the only thing that is, you know, stopping them. They 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 are the highest place in EU team at the majors too. But you know, I think they are a dominant force, and they just need to win a major to you know solidify what they are. You know, we got Hixie. We man's done it again. You're good. Yeah, I I don't see I don't see a team actually beating these. Um, especially when that war team, they've obviously lost, they, they bank, they got Marcus back, but they've lost, they've lost some players too. Um, it's a bit, you know, uh, this, this team with Wee Man and Vortex, like they haven't had any issues where players have left or like came in or anything like that. Everything that's happened to them, they've wanted to happen. Uh, apart from, um, was it Real that left them before? I think. That was Oma team? Uh, yeah. That might be right. Um, yeah, I think they played. Yeah, I think, I think, I, I, yeah, I think it was Real that went. He was on their team and then left, or like, well, got called up by Miami, and then so Hixie joined them. If I'm not mistaken, um, someone can quote me if I'm wrong, but I don't think I am because I never am. Um, so Hixie wrong. joins them. Hixie joins them, and you know they had that. We had this little like little beef beforehand, like you know when Hixie joined them, Ben Beans's team won, and then now I feel like Vortex's team is just on a different level you know now ben beans has gone and stuff like that so it's funny though hixie joins another team all of a sudden they're unbeatable this guy well, needs i this... mean they weren't unbeatable for a bit they, they were top one and two mm -hmm. they were top one and two and then hixie joins and now they're looking like the best eu team for sure all i'm saying is yeah they're all good but hixie joins Got yeah, the guy in the league, man. I, we met Trey will vouch for we man. My vouchers are still for Hixie and Capital. Get these boys in the league, man. Game changers, I mean, absolute I, masterpieces. I, I'll, vouch, I'll vouch for all four of these. To be fair, like even Mythics is new, but he's been piecing for these. Hixie obviously deserves it. We man, fucking hell. We've just given Pentagram his spot after three years of of, of being vouched for. Like we need, <laughs> can we get Wee Man in this bitch? Or uh, and then Vortex obviously he's been doing it for time. Just give, just give him a shot, even if it's on the sub bench. Just give him a shot. Get it, get it, get it, get it. We need that London Ravens team back, man. But speaking of these guys, let's jump over to some the some of the uh, some of the other stuff that happened at the the major here. We have Scrappy telling a story about beating Carolina in warm ups two fifty to seventeen. Very toxic. But this is on the Toronto podcast that there was a this is really random controversy about. But this is why we need more COD content like this right here. You get these kind of stories coming out, t telling us what's happening behind the scenes. Love to see it. Um, 250 to 17. That is a that is one of the funniest things that I've ever done. Like, <laughs> oh, the PPA. We yeah. 250 to 17 Carolina, and then you had some words to say to them. Yo, <laughs> they're right behind us. Right Our PPA is yeah. here. Carolina. All it is. Here. It's just like for anyone that doesn't know what PPA is, it's just a curtain. So like, bro, you can just wipe that open. The team's right there. We beat. I mean, should we say the team? I just oh, said no, it. I just. Carolina right behind us. We went <laughs> on Rio 250-17, right? It was honestly just like we're running at him, just winning every gunfight. Yeah. I just swing open the things I said. Holy, f are we lagging over here? <laughs> and bro, Clay stared at me and said, "Get the fuck!" He was so mad. At and then like, bro, we could hear everything they're saying, bro. It, I was in tears. I was in literal tears after I like came back to our PPA. Clay was tweaking, and uh, it was good. It was good. Um, 250 to 17. I can't, I really can't say that I'm shocked that they beat them that badly on Rio, considering it's ultra on Rio in warm ups versus Carolina. Anyone shocked here? I mean, both teams are sort of up to be fair. Like, this is just I mean, you're gonna content. get more than 17 points, though. 
you got yeah it's not even as bad the funny thing is it's not even as bad as when they be lat and cold war right it wasn't scrappy there but it was inside clinics when it was uh 250 14 on that. I mean, we can say we're not sure if 100 map. point clubbed them, but 20 point clubs a bit crazy. Like, 20 you know. point club is crazy. Did you nearly get 20 point clubbed in? No, it wasn't you guys. What was that game? That was it very was, nice. Uh... You, hey, 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 you <laughs> regain over there. I don't think it was that's ever been happening to close to happening, Rab, before you even start. Don't okay, <laughs> maybe it wasn't your team. Quite toxic, it was, uh, Okay, it break out hard points, infinite warfare. Yo, uh, Loki, that was my team. team. Yeah, no, that was Loki. Yeah, that was 23, me. wasn't it? Yeah, that, I think that was actually me. No <laughs> there you go, honestly. This guy, bro. Yeah, any any COD knows in the chat might remember that map because that was an Loki. embarrassing one as a you, <laughs> you fan. Yeah, no that, no, that was actually me. I can't lie, I remember I it was swear. Josh, like, because I think it was that slice. Trey, Josh? Put, Trey literally put I that shit outside of his memory, like, tucked it away to never come back out. Rab wait, said was it, that, wait a minute. Was that me? I don't know, but that because Josh. Ended Wait, up if, on you the jo team. If, if you but say if you say Josh is always Epsilon. If it yeah, is Josh, I don't think it was Epsilon, Epsilon though. I'm pretty sure it was you guys. To be honest. This, really uh, this, sure. this 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 reminds me of something like but that was um, you know that was at least wait was it wait wait was it wait, wait was this the. Uh... Was that the um oh what was it the 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 little shitty show match event? Yeah, a PSX, yeah, that was me. Maybe. Yeah, that was yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, we were lagging. For sure. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that was the event where uh did Rated had like Tiff in his bio and it was like yeah. play has <laughs> broken up with Tiff or something. <laughs> I don't know if anyone remembers. I think he just put Tiff in his bio. The funny thing about that event was we were sat there playing S and D and we were up like four one or something like that, and Joe starts shooting Clay's body, and I was like, "Bro, don't shoot his body, don't shoot his body, don't shoot his body." He <laughs> lengs out his body. We get come back on in the S and D, and I think we get thirty point club in the hard point. Oh no, GG. Yeah, okay. G fucking God, that's, those are the times. But at least this was not on stream. But Clay was still happy about it. Um, it's just funny because those guys have a have an entertaining bit of drama. I mean, I've been smoked. I've been smoked in the. I've been smoked in the PPA before. <laughs> just gotta laugh it off go get a gatorade chill out with the boys you know what i'm saying i've heard good to see heard uh trying to level it up their content though like they at least got the boys mic stands this time so there was that yeah i think i think they're, they're a team that like a lot of people want to hear from and they have the personalities on there especially scrap to push out some great content and tell some funny stories and do it in an entertaining way so w warantos in the chat if you could uh, now we get to the juice, we get to the spice, what we've been dreading to talk about, what Trey's dreading to talk about, but a lot of thoughts on, on this map set, a lot of thoughts on these new patches and all this. GAs, guys, GAs. Six star hard point officially replacing Skid That's Row not official hardpoint. yet. Is this true? I mean, yes, it's true. Six star yeah, hardpoint is replacing <laughs> Skid Row hardpoint in the CDL map set. W or L... Trey, have you tried to try, have you had a chance to try the map? Nah, I heard there was a hill in the pool when I said I'm not playing that until they sort that out, which they're there probably not going to sort it out. Apparently, um, Parasite said his people tell him they're going to sort it out and they're going to move it. I don't know if I believe, but also this is what annoys me is like apparently they put the map in the game knowing that probably the pool hill was going to be dog shit and people weren't going to like it. But they thought but that's what they do every time. They don't, anyway. they, they, they like, don't they, apparently, they already they, had an alternative drawn yeah, out, they but don't, they just decided not to do it. They don't give it to no one. Some guy sat there, he's not got a fucking Scooby what hard point is, and he's like, one in the pool would be cool, right? Like, <laughs> cool, yeah. yeah that'd be cool. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be cool. <laughs> the guys, 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 guys. They're going to solve it. By major five, Next, yeah. okay, they're gonna solve it by major yeah. five. All right, don't Which worry. Even exist, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, so, so what's gonna happen is they're gonna rem <laughs> they're gonna remove that hill. They're gonna put it somewhere else and give us two more nerfs on a gun that doesn't need to be nerfed. Four major seven for next year. Um, <laughs> when the new they game sometimes do that shit. They fix the game the next year, and I'm like, all right, nice one, lads. Well played. I next mean, the, the issue is, is this map. The these maps that are coming in and stuff like that. Yeah, like. For one, like, how quick are they going to come in? Because I know pros are already scrimming it, so it's kind of already official. And then, boom, CDL comes along, and it's like, whoa, we got some new maps coming in for these matches. Like, there's no announcement. There's none of that shit. Also, I don't know if you guys have seen it, but 
they've also removed sub base from rank play. Yeah, what's going on with that? Is yeah. it broken again? You got any intel, Ace? No intel personally. I just noticed it as well that there was no sub base, and then someone commented it commented it on Twitter, and coming to realize, yeah, truthfully, I haven't. I've played a bunch of ranked the last few days. Haven't had it once. And they didn't announce anything in the patch notes. I checked them. There's nothing in the patch notes. So, but it's what the hell's in. happening? Yeah, it's but still, it's it's still, in, it's still in rotation. Yeah, it's still in rotation. It's never. We haven't had any leaks or intel of it being voted out. So the developers just took it upon themselves to randomly put it back in and randomly take it out again without patch notes, without a vote, without anything. Kind of odd. Very, very cod esque for this to happen. Stupid! I can't even. I, I, I'm I'm fuming because I love the map. I actually, it's one of my favorite maps to play, like for rank play, because it's so easy to get kills. It's so easy. Secondly, what the hell? Like, I don't know what they're doing over there. We got these new GAs coming in as well. Like, or these spoke about GAs. I don't know what's going on. Honestly, this is. They've decided to bring out a patch that didn't need to come out at all for these guns. No one complained about them at all, and they've just made... Genuinely, I feel like they've made the game worse, and they just don't care. Jump it ahead. Wait, I have, I have it twice? Do nice, what I want. dude. Oh, so then th this is the other flip as well. So, six-star control is being considered for high-rise control, not invasion. Six-star S&D for terminal S&D is being debated per sources. Do, do we think... In this panel here, do we think the control set should be changed? I think the I think the game mode should just get fucking blown up. To be honest, <laughs> <laughs> I, I I genuinely couldn't care what maps are being played on it. it. You could give me raid back, and I'd still think it's shit on this game. Um, I don't think any of these maps are made for control. I don't. Yeah, I, the only control map I want to see gone is invasion to be honest with you, but I already... Isn't there, like, a clip going around that, like, the yeah, vote... Yeah, I'm trying to find out. it real quick. Yeah, there's a clip already out that the vote went in favor of it not being changed. Yeah, so, I mean, th th that's been, that's been the other talk. Shows. All right, I got you. That's been Basically, the talk as well, yeah. Basically, the pro teams voted in favor of six-star control in, but they didn't vote enough in favor. And therefore... Unlucky. Seven to five ain't good enough. We'll see Dashi talk about this in a second. Um, yeah, it's a nine to three rating, which I actually do agree with. Yeah, let's watch the clip right now. Just got it right now. So let's watch this clip from JP. 15 seconds, a little brief one. Let me get this volume up. Star Control or SD didn't make it. Uh, I don't know about Search, but Control just didn't get enough votes. I think it was like seven five or something. Didn't get, didn't get enough votes by the teams. It has to get majority, and it didn't. It only got five. Any reason? It doesn't have to just get majority. Actually, just to be clear, it has to get yeah nine, which is overwhelming majority, not just majority. Because seven, seven, five technically is majority, but it needs overwhelming majority, double times majority, which it did not get. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I think personally that's an L. I think control is getting a bit stale. I think it's definitely the most stale game mode. Most people would agree. Just watching hardpoint's fun to watch, but some maps just suck with spawns. Control, though, is just stale to watch. We need something. At least new maps will make us interested in watching it. Getting an invasion there for the thousand time is just not... I don't think it's cutting anymore. Um, even if they just added the map and expanded the map pool, that would have been fine, too, per I think, personally. Um, what about S&D, though? Six-star S&D for terminal S&D? Uh, do we think S&D needs an update as well or no? Get terminal S&D out of my fucking eyeballs, bro. This thing is absurdly bad. Terminal's got to go. It is by far one of the worst SD maps we've ever played, and I cannot believe it. It's just still in here. <laughs> yeah. This is not a competitive map. Like, it's just not designed well for competitive surge. Six star, just based on the layout. And also in surge, you don't have to worry about the spawns that are dodgy. So, like, you make a good map design, it should play well for surge. Apparently, tanked was considered. I know Ezimax said this on the Reddit that <clears throat> they played tank. Apparently, Two teams or whatever, they scrimmed tank tile point and they both said, nah, it ain't good. And therefore, nobody else bothered to scrim it. Which just really sums up the whole situation. Maybe it is dog shit, and that's fair enough. But, like, this happens so much where teams don't want to practice something 
and then one or two teams give it a go and they say, nah, not very good, because they like, you know, sub base or whatever. And they don't want to come from the pool. And therefore, unlucky, doesn't get trials. And we'll say the same shit with departures in a second. That's what kind of pisses me about this. Actually, let me just do it now. Like, like they were looking at high rise control to be gone rather than invasion, which I think is a bit cheese anyway, because at least high rise you can capture both of the bloody points reasonably easily. Invasion is just absolute cancer to the eyes, unfortunately. It's like if you stare into the bloody solar eclipse, is what they say will happen to you if you watch too much invasion. That's what I think is actually <laughs> happening to me. I only I might actually come up with like a boycott of watching Invasion or High Rose Control. I might only watch Karachi. That might be a decision I make. But this was the one, right? Departures Control, I don't think it's that bad. I think it's definitely better than Invasion. But the issue is you need an overwhelming majority. Teams don't even want to bloody try it. And I still believe that it shouldn't be on the teams to decide this. Like, I honestly, I almost want to give the pros some props because they have at least done something. And the map pool will be significantly different to what it was previously. And for Hardpoint, we're going to have Six Star, Vista, and Rio in the rotation, which is actually a very solid change from the start of the season, at least in terms of something happening. But they could still do more. Often they're just way too lazy. And they didn't even try Departures Control, even though it's arguably better. But even if they did, would it get voted in? I'm not so sure, just because... The terrible teams that are trash of control, they like playing Invasion because it's like, well, round five defense cheese. Let's just try and get defense and win the game. Well, you know, you know how it goes. So this is why they do this bullshit. I don't know if it was the same thing with like Gavuto or something back in Vanguard when the trash teams wanted to keep it in just because it was like a free defense. But there were certain teams, Trey, that were pretty good at offense on that map. So it Very good offense. Work. Very good. Very good. <laughs> One of them went by the name of London Royal Ravens, and there was a guy on there called Trey Zero who kept B by himself many times. Many <laughs> times. What a player. Um, I think, I think the biggest issue is, is that, like, how, many, how long have these guys had to, you know, play these maps? Departure and Vistas has been in, been in the game since Major 2's finished, correct? Yes. Yeah, Just they've about. been in the game a while. Just about. I mean, they've like, been in the game since before Major Two qualifiers even started. Departures. I mean, let's be real. Let's be real. Vista. Exactly. Everyone likes Vista because it looks cool. It's very colorful. <laughs> it's pretty. You know, right? it's good. It's a very pretty yeah. map. <laughs> I think it's. I, I don't think it's a great map, but I also don't think Departures is a great map. I think Departures Control was probably better than High Rise Control, but that's just it. it if I have to stare at another map base in an airport, I think I might fucking throw myself off one. Um, <laughs> if I'm being honest with you. Um, it's nice to see new maps coming in. I, I'm Honestly, I'm so tired, like sick and tired of these maps that were made in 2009. Like, it's, it's very nice. I, I would happily play Departure's Hardpoint over some of these maps. And, you know, it's... With Vista, yeah, obviously they're not great, but they are better than what we have currently right now. Like Skid Row, Hardpoint, that's next to go. Like that is by far one of the worst Hardpoint maps I've played in, in my time. You know, we've got two hills that are unbreakable and that just shouldn't be a thing. Uh, um, I'm going to say that. I found the VOD, by the way. It wasn't you, Trey. It wasn't you. <laughs> I, I found the VOD he's from been, Infinite he, Warfare. He's been it, searching. It, it wasn't PSX. It was... Uh, Oh, I was I was out by one. It was two fifty to twenty two, not two fifty to twenty three. Oh no, I got comeback on that I'm map washed. bad actually. That was it. I was ten points away from that. winning. You can yeah, bring no, this up on stream if you want real quick. Sorry. So if you guys missed it, I was talking earlier. What how did I get into oh no, okay, two fifty to seventeen, Scrappy versus Clay. I mentioned that I thought Trey maybe got put in the blender back in Infinite Warfare, but this was um las vegas so this wasn't playstation x even though you did play them a couple of times on that on breakout this is psx this wasn't psx this was next door in las vegas when it was josh jerd madcat and bounce on splice so this is pre zero splice tenure this is this is why this is why zero came to splice because of shit like this right here 22 yeah, to 250 exactly. Getting yeah, absolutely when I was on it. Didn't happen when I was on the team. Let's <laughs> just <laughs> Yeah, get it absolutely pissed on. Is that so, is, is yeah, that brother you know, B Sport Josh? Is that B Sport Josh with the three and seven? That's B Sport yeah. Josh. That's B Sport. Yeah. Good, good shit, B Sport Josh. That's uh, the best Boston Breach coach that was uh, unfairly done by in the most recent changes. They, they watched this vod and said they got to get this guy out of here, man. He got he got went twenty two fucking three and seven. I had a guy that I bet he watched the channel. He actually uh, he's a great lad. 
I don't know if he follows Cole much anymore, but I met him at London 2019. He was a B-Sport Josh stan. Like, B-Sport was his favorite player, bar none, by a mile. Like, he wanted B-Sport's signature. He was cheering for him on stage. Like, I respect that. Do you have him, any man. super fans, Trey, when you were playing? Nah, no one likes me. Jesus, I like you, I like you bro. <laughs> Not... Nah, I liked you. Speaking of, speaking of departures, by the way, I just want to say that I think departures... Control B point is pretty good. It's like a decent point. It's fun to play on. A is where I think it's a little cheese. Uh, that outer area with the cars and stuff makes it really hard to get to. And just you could a guy could just finesse the car the entire time. It's almost like playing the Rio P. What is it? P four? P two? No, P three. But yeah, like from I, one I, direction, basically. So you only are fighting I, the car I, I one agree. way. So I don't like. I agree. It. Yeah, I don't like the control very much. So, um, yeah. Th thoughts I on mean, the A point I, of control there? I, I think I think it could work. I just think like it is impossible. If someone sat in that head glitch, it is probably impossible to rip them off of it. Yeah, and then you, but one guy sitting there, one the guy sitting problem. near the spawn in that corner, in like a corner when you come down those stairs, and pretty much GGs. You're not getting, you're not capping anything. You're, you're, you're getting, you're just losing basically. So I mean, uh, we say this, but there's god head glitches on every fucking map we play. So yeah, I, I agree. But I will say departures control. I don't like departures S and D maybe but it would still be very stair glitchy it was just it wasn't that great of a map you know map i think should be considered which this again controversial take let's here we go but i think dude scrapyard is a good map bro bro it is so dog shit bro. scrapyard is a good is? map bro all right it's a good map for what no 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 it's a good it's a good map for what hardpoint only hardpoint only you're an idiot you're an idiot. Hardpoint only. Small map. <laughs> Hardpoint only. Get it in okay, there. Actually, Small map. Fun to watch. Viewer experience to the max. Player experience. You I don't give a shit. Scrub you ain't giving me player a mandated eight rivals. Bro, stop giving me viewer experience rivals. bullshit. Viewer Jeez, bro. experience. That's, bro, that's what there, someone bro. said to me today, bro. I was streaming today and I was playing Skid Row P2. I couldn't break it. Yeah, I can't break it. And he goes, I like this map. It's, it gets mixy. I don't care. Wait, <laughs> I, uh, I, you guys, I like watching this map. It gets mixy in the P1s. I do not give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is why the pros shouldn't make the decisions. This is why we need a GA committee of people that can see the full picture, you know. Because I agree with what you're saying, Trey. But I also think that there has some part to play. And this is when we need to come up with a committee to like this. I don't think this shit's ever going to happen, but look, if we ever want to be a serious esport, the pros can't be deciding shit like this. Like, in proper esports, this doesn't happen. The pros, first of all, they probably don't even do GAs, because in serious games such as Counter-Strike, the game is balanced enough that it doesn't actually matter in general. Second of all, they don't decide the bloody map set. In Counter-Strike, they can have their opinions. They can say, oh, I want Nuke gone, oh, we should bring Cash back, or whatever, but they don't make the call. The developers make the call. All the that's people in charge of the leagues make the call. That's what I was going to say. Like, bro, is this not the softest esport in the planet? Got to be up there. It, I, I, it might have to be. Like, the dev should say, listen, we've got these maps. We're putting them in there. We don't give a flying fuck. Because guess what exists? VOs. Enjoy. Like, or, like you said, GA committee. But I'm, I'm okay with the pros banning, you know, banning some guns that are OP or whatever like that. But then we start talking about attachments. Then we start, you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, just, just, just throw everything in there. The pros can GA some attachments, but maps and stuff like that. Like, if the pros don't want to play departures, it's in there to play. Like you know, LAG zero and six. Fuck it, we'll run a we'll run a departures control. Fuck it. Yeah, this is how real esports operate. Is like they don't let the pros do all the politics bullshit because it's not like the pros have bad opinions on the maps necessarily. Like it's good to have the input from the pros. What annoys me is that they won't get rid of shit. Like invasion control, it won't go because the shit teams like it because they want to win a game five defense, round five defense. Same thing for like. Sub base hardpoint is not great. I actually personally don't even mind it. But I think the reason why it's staying is because the top teams, like let's say Optic and Ultra, they ain't going to vote sub base gone because FaZe are bad at it. It's like that's the only possible way you beat FaZe is by keeping sub base in the bloody rotation. So it's like, got all this politics shit. 
that Mars and it's drama, right? I'm complaining, it's bloody drama. But but it'd be more boring if the team if the developers just decided or the developers worked with a group of individuals that would make a call on this. I had a thought on like which people it would be, because I've always thought if there was to be like a GA who do you put on it? Who plays and tests the map and decides? Because I don't trust the devs to come up with a good idea, to be honest. Like, I don't really trust them. I think in Halo, it's a similar thing. Like, I'm pretty sure the pros ain't deciding the map pool in Halo. The, I'm pretty sure the devs, like 343, decide. They have, like, a group of guys that makes the game. The de- developers, but a lot of them are, like, former players and stuff. They basically decide the map set. So, you I think ideally saying, it should yeah. be some ex-pros and... Which should I was going to say, you see what I'm saying, like with this, like that vote that just happened with six star that was seven to five. Yeah, the only way a map should not get put in by the devs is if it's an overwhelming zero to 12 or one to 11. You know what I'm saying? Like something overwhelming. It's seven to five, bro. Whack the fucking map in. <clears throat> That's a good point. Like the CDL should actually just step in at that point and say, fuck it. Well, the majority of teams voted for it in, so we're not going to deal with any of your bullshit voting. Like it's going in. <laughs> not even a, it, it, like it obviously if it like you said it's got more than fucking like majority votes there whatever like that the cdo should be like you know what they can't really stop us from fucking putting it in there clearly it's an okay map five people don't five teams don't want it seven teams do fuck it you're going in there if you don't want to play it don't play it if you do do yeah uh, there needs to be there needs to be like a rules and compliance other esports have rule like rules and compliance committees basically when it comes to gas when it comes to maps this group that is hired and, and put together by the company themselves will dictate yes or no. So speaking of the earlier point of Rabs, who would be on that committee? I don't know. Get like, Aix works for another game now, but he would have been a great guy to have on that committee right there. Um, Zuma's already the GA com- commissioner, basically right now. So get Zuma on there. Get some other ex-pros, um, some respected ones. Parasite, I know in chat, is someone that a lot of people talk about. Get Parasite on there. He loves the game. He plays it a lot. He's very calculated. He's a world champ. Get him on there. Uh, just, there's some good guys that you can have on this rules and committee board that can maybe override the pros and maybe the pros gives their suggestion. Then rules and committees, compliance or committee will come together, decide, put it out there and let it run. And the devs can give them statistics. Okay, this control point B was this unbreakable on offense. Okay, if it's 89% unbreakable, then maybe we make a change for the next stage and we adapt as the game goes on. There's a good way to go about this. And I think as of right now, it's very unorganized and giving players that have their own incentives as to why or why not have a map in is, it's like insider trading basically for stocks. Like it's, it's, you're giving the insiders the ability to control their game. Doesn't make sense. So definitely need to change. I like a bit of insider trading. Cash, baby. <laughs> now, what I will say is you need the people involved not to have bias though, because like in an ideal world, guys like even Parasite, but certainly, you know, Zuma has obviously done a good job on this end this season with the snaking thing and getting that kind of, you know, the GA commission and all this. Nature would be a good candidate. Merc, I think, is like in in many ways the ideal guy because he's a caster, obviously very close to the scene top player back in the day i've always thought like merc and tp and those guys would be kind of you know you want to struggle it a bit because maybe you do need somebody that's played like very recently as well like you need a, a few guys but you can't give it to nade shot because he's going to have bias related to thieves you can't give it to zuma because he's going to have bias related to phase because he works with them in some regards it's like you know they might whisper in his ear and if you just vote no for this then we'd really appreciate I, it I, I don't think anyone's really going to be that biased like maybe maybe nature because like yeah he does own the fucking team i don't think i don't think zuma would have bias towards phase because although he's on phase like it I, I mean the gas that he has actually done haven't had any bias towards phase though let's be honest that's, that's true. true. It's just the optics, I guess. Yeah, you, know, yeah. you could look. Like, you, you, can't, you, you can't leave the room for it. You can't leave the room there, for the you know? conflict of interest. You have to remove that component as uh, from anyone oh, being able yeah, to argue for that. Sure. I'm, yeah, I'm straight up. I'm straight up saying like anything he's done now has been in the interest of the game. Like, if not, then he wouldn't have like tried doing this snake and two pump thing. He'd have been like, nah, fuck that. We should keep it in. He's got fucking cell on his team. Like, of course he's going to try and keep that in. You know? No, I think um, I think I think there's some there's some good shouts like apathy. Parasite. Um, who else doesn't own a team right now? Who's 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 freshly out? Aches again. Aches if he didn't own if he didn't do X Defiant would be a great shot as well. 
Um, these kind of guys, I think, would be a good starting three. But on that committee, I don't think all pros should be the idea. It shouldn't be like 10 pros. It should be a couple, like several pros mixed with devs and then mixed maybe with some game testers, some, some, some statistics guys. And they all come together and kind of with all the data decide what's good, what's bad, what works, what doesn't, instead of just throwing darts at a wall like we're doing right now and internal biases messing up the process, basically. So, um, yeah, yeah, speaking of... Speaking of, of oh messing God. up the process and, and things like that, let's talk about some let's talk about some nerfs. Let's talk about some some gun nerfs real quick, huh? Yeah, what do we think about this one, Trey? Like, uh, it's, it's, uh, it, it's terrible. This is the main AR and insanity. the main SMG in your day, bro. The issue is, and I say this: the ARs want to kill up close with the, against the subs, and the subs want to kill the ARs across the map. We've we've all been so accustomed to these SMGs being so fucking good now that like we just think, all right, my rival should be able to kill you across the map if I hit my shots. Like that never used to happen back back when we played, like back in the old games, bro. Like the VMP, the Cudas and stuff like that, back up three, yeah, they were good, but they like you didn't chow the ARs across the map. The the PPSH is from World War II. Like, we didn't chow STGs straight up gunfights across the map. Like, you know, we, we, we just never won those. We've been so accustomed to this, like, MW19 MP5 with Merc 4 grip. This I, I was just thinking War, that is when it changed. That and this the Cold War was when it changed. This, this Cold War uh, AK74 U, you know, I think the last game that we had that was very balanced in terms of like you weren't challenging an AR across the map with Black Ops 4. You know, the sword wasn't challenging an ICR across the map. Like you just weren't doing that. Um and this whole like argument of like like if they were that OP there'd be four of them on the map. That's literally not an argument. Like it's just not because obviously like if there was four rivals against four rivals, yeah. Someone someone could just sit on the god heady and take him off of it. I'm not talking about god headies here. I'm talking about a straight up gunfight across the map. Like the rival beats the MCW across the map. Like in in a range battle. Like I don't think you guys really understand like how easy it is to shoot on these games now, especially with like I said, the ARs want to kill subs up close. The ARs want to do it all gun, and the subs want to do it all gun within the same gun. So you've got to come to the decision of do we run eight BPs or, you know, I think the meta was perfectly fine before. I don't think the game needed to change at all. I think what they've done to the game has actually made it worse. And there was literally no one crying for this change whatsoever. They just done it on their own back because why not? That's what COD does. Well, they, they did just... the Karachi, bro. They ruined Karachi Hardpoint for no reason. They, they just, just that shit for no they reason. <laughs> they just they really just change it for no reason. And guess what? You've just resulted into an absolute turmoil. No one knows what to run. We've got a rival being the rival barrel being talked about being GA'd. Apparently it did get GA'd and Dashi tweeted out something about it, like hey, what? So we're still running this fucking barrel. It was attachment one vote right? away. That was the thing. It was it was one vote away from nine. But we can discuss that in a second. I think just quickly on this, because it did remind me of a topic really that of why COD used to be different back in the day. I do feel like the game is better to watch more SMGs, and if there aren't eight rivals on the map, I don't really care. People can just cry about it as far as I'm concerned. But what I will say is back in the good days, let's say Black Ops 2, especially Black Ops 2 is a good example. You're on Black Ops 2, Trey. Picture this, yeah? You're challenging Zigzag. You're challenging across the kitchen. That guy's got an M8. You've got an MSMC. Good luck winning that gunfight, even bro, at that you range. Ne bro, you never won that gunfight. That <laughs> you range. never won that gunfight, bro. Imagine you were top you art never. trying to chow top, um, top laundry. No way bro, you won that gunfight. But the, funny no thing is, the, Monday, the funny thing is, yeah, that was a standard kill in Cold War. In Cold War, exactly. Standard kill. This is what oh, changed, bro. Because, like, you, you, you actually got laughed at if you didn't chow it. <laughs> yeah, because you, you could get away with it. Because in, I think... I'm pretty sure I know these numbers because I remember looking at it at the time. Black Ops 2, and it was the same story in other games around that era, there were different aim assist ranges with the different weapons. So Black Ops 2, I know the, the numbers in terms of meters are arbitrary, but it was like 37 meters or something is your aim assist limit with an SMG. Any SMG, you get aim assist for the first 37 meters. After that, you get zero aim assist. So not only do you have high recoil, but you've got no aim assist. So if you want to chill someone further than that, the AR had double that in aim assist range. 
So you could not, you simply could not shout. The gun was better up close, faster movement speed, better hip fire spread, faster fire rate, all this good stuff up close. You can kill the ARs. But past a certain range, you could not shout them. And in, the perfect example is comparing that to Black Ops Cold War, because by then the game had changed such that the aim assist on every gun just lasts forever. And you can just chat anything with any gun. Like, it's one of the reasons why we don't have an interest. Oh, I'm watching Haggy kill people across. Well. I'm watching Haggy kill people from window to window, or from his window to their window on high rides with a rival. And people are like, ah, oh, good shot. Like, like, <laughs> yeah, <I mean. laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it is nice shots. But you name me a game before, before MW 2019 where you could do that. You just couldn't. Let's say Black Ops 3, because I always got to mention it if I've got a chance. Um, I don't know. Let's say I'm inside Fringe, Grandma's Hill, the absolute money hill on that one. I've got a VMP in the window somewhere. I'm trying to take gunfights into tin, or I'm trying to take gunfights down mid. I've got to hit some bloody nice shots to even get close to getting a kill there. Whereas, like, I've just got to play inside the hill. That's, but the, I'm going to fry you point blank range. Bro, just some, uh, Rab, just some, or Ace, imagine seeing your teammate chow top grannies to top red on fringe with a VMP compared to someone's <laughs> M8, bro. Like, you're getting dropped next day. Yeah, <laughs> you're insane. Great. You're literally insane. And that, now, yeah. now, if you, now if you chow it these days and you kill him, it's like, yo, he got ripped. <laughs> like, instead of being <laughs> like, bro, you've done that on Black Ops 3. You were, you're like, that's a, that's a multi billion dollar contract. But you do it these days, you're on the min. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I you think know, it was like <laughs> one kill. I remember there was one kill I got from top. It wasn't quite top grannies to top barn, but it was like top grannies to someone was just jumped out of top barn or something. And I hit the like, you know, six or seven shots with the VMP, just beamed him. And I'm like, holy shit, I'm the fucking goat. And I was like, I got yeah. that kill once in my entire career. Like that ain't a daily occurrence. That's like, you click that nah. shit and you put it on Twitter when you get and, that kill. And this Nowadays, is when I was saying, this is map. when I was saying, this is when I was saying to Ace as well. Like, that's why I like, like, you know, like, the two gun meta makes it m more fun to watch because, like, you get to like watch how sub players take these routes so they can't kill the AIs off these exits or whatever, like that. But that's why it was more fun to watch it back in the day because these subs weren't doing that. Like, you had to watch, like, if a sub put himself in a situation where he had to fucking fight an AR, he would bob and weave out of there and stuff like that because he knows he can't take it. These days, bro, I'm watching a BZ, I'm watching Sim Hydra just wax these AIs off these exits <laughs> like it's nothing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna take it. What slightly, happened to the game? I love. I'm gonna take it a slightly different way, though. I think, along with aim assist and, and things like that, uh, dynamic, a bunch of changes to sensitivities, a bunch of different changes in terms of just comp cod, or, uh, you know, a uh, uh, PC cod. It's made. I'm gonna argue dynamic has made aiming easier. When everyone was on standard, one aim assist, very very similar sensitivities. There wouldn't like, be some pros about dynamic. I agree. <sighs> agreed. I think that changed the game very big. The secondary point is that Warzone, Battle Royales, the multitude of guns now, the need for guns to hit range and that, like, you know, hit 100, 200, 300 meters away and get some bullet reg. That also causes a big issue with Encomp as well because they try to make it consistent between both. So I think from dynamic, and making the game inconsistent and changing up how the aim of everyone, right? I don't, I, I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, CS, Valorant, there's no, there's not multiple kinds of, of, of aiming types. Am I, am I correct on that? There's no, is there different dynamic, standard, linear, this one, all this? There's just one. No, there's no aim assist. I mean, you just, you can turn on mouse acceleration if you're a maniac, but no, I mean, with the... my, my point exactly, right? Like, I, I want the confirmation. The I want the confirmation because I know the chat doesn't believe me, but when you guys say it, they believe it. So I'm getting the confirmation that <laughs> I could have just said that. They would be like, nah, Ace is bullshitting. Listen, that's. And you can the... change your sensitivity and shit, but like, it's. You know. Right, four or five, you may slow it down fast, but you're not changing your curve, your S curve, and this and that, how it moves. That's where COD died, in my opinion. The aim assist stuff would help and would force the two, the two roles to be more precise but i think we have other issues along the way that make cod a bit more inconsistent than most esports um and now jumping to some other inconsistencies over one majority of the league voted for an attachment to be removed and i'm still spawning it against them i'm the only one that thinks this is insane or nah dashi tweets this in reference to the rival barrel that was up for vote to be removed in order to give ars a proper chance uh in scrims and in competitive call of duty Trey? It's funny they say a proper chance, though. I'm not going to lie. Like, these guys have been running around with a god gun for a while, and then they're like, oh.
going to cry about it. I think TJ I mean, is going to cry this. But, speaking um, of, just, just go on. backtracking a tad bit to the Amos, I feel so, like, because we're speaking about Dashi, I feel so sorry for Dashi. This guy is like the one of the greatest snap shooters, fucking best gun skill like in COD that we've seen in a while. And people can just be as good as him because, of, bro, this guy used to snap like this. He used to shoot like he had dynamic back on the games that didn't have dynamic. And now he hops on this and everyone's shooting against him the exact same. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I do feel sorry for him. Speaking about this, though. I mean that's just that's just the ruling, bro. I'm gonna be real. Like that's <laughs> that's what's been decided. That's been what it's been since the CDLs. But the um, pros chose their bloody nine to three majority requirement, yeah. so you know they got to lay in their bed. You you, <laughs> you have to you have to stick by it. If they want to change it, they want to change it. Um, like I said, we wouldn't even be having this conversation if the devs didn't change something they didn't need to change. There's, I've not heard anyone complain about the headshot multiplier for the for for the AR or the SMG. Like the SMG was deemed the god gun, but the AR was still keeping up. I didn't hear anyone complain about it. Um, and boom, guess what? They come back from major two. The fuck it, everything's shit. Are we shocked? No. I don't. I don't. I don't. I, and I can't even use a different AR if I wanted to because they banned all the ARs on rank play. So I'm stuck with this fucking MCW two. The I'm gonna say that they were one vote away from this being removed. I don't know. There's a lot of cheese going on. I think MCW is still it's still usable, but does it feel significantly different from the first from the last two stages? Absolutely. Is the rival need to be changed slightly? Does it make a huge difference? I don't think it makes a huge difference. I think people are overreacting a bit to it. I think pros understandably are annoyed with the changes to their game, but is it gonna change? Is it going to change the maps and how things play out 90% of the time? Probably not. But is Brandon 100% right to be annoyed that when they get a double majority, which I believe the vote was like 8-4 to four again, when you get a double majority like that, I could totally understand being annoyed. And, and the teams that, I think there was a clip, I don't know if we have it here, but the one team, the team that voted no was, was Seattle. Yeah, so Seattle, Seattle were the last yeah, team Seattle to vote. Seattle was the one, yeah. I mean, um, I'm gonna be real, bro. Like, like, how, like, how are you gonna sit there and be the final vote and you don't even have your roster sorted? You're getting piss yeah. slammed. Like, that's like, actually you know, another good point that Dashy made. He was like, I don't, know, I don't think we had the two. Maybe you guys. No, nah, I think he did. Did, did he de delete it? Uh, I know it's on your own. Right. He's like the bottom. <laughs> yeah, the uh, yeah, bottom four teams, teams that are voting. Same, yeah, that, like, <laughs> was it teams that are voting are out on Friday or something like that? <laughs> that yeah, it, yeah, 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 yeah. We are the teams that voted for this year out on Friday. Yeah, that was comedy. I mean, but he's not wrong in the sense that, like, I mean, like, should some teams have more of a vote than other teams? Look, at the end of the day, the probably pros came up with these rules that they just could, they complain about the own rules they came up with. And but maybe they're not that, all that, voted on these but rules. the issue is, is that, like I said, that the pros are deciding it, yeah? So when something doesn't go their way, there's going to be people that moan and people that don't moan. Yeah, like I said, I was, I was, a, I was the... I was our GA rep in the GA chat. Oh, like, let's go, let's go. You know, it it gets a bit beefy. You know, it, people people can. It's all the ARs, some... man. I'm telling you, that's why they cry because you go through that chat list you were in at the time. There's you. There's accuracy. There's slasher. There's all the ARs. That's why. Well, yeah, that's because it. no one else wants to fucking be in there. <laughs> I've chatted, we've said that. Oh, this is AR dominant. All right, let's go bring people in. Do you know there are times that people just left? No, I'm not doing that. We had Bantz come in. He, he left the chat. Oh, I'm going to add this guy. He'll leave. Oh, I'm going to add Bantz back. I don't want to do this. Fucking. Right. <laughs> you know. It, oh, you can actually see it at the bottom of this one. Um, Ace, I'm, like, it's already on this tweet. Yeah. I replied there to Karma. Three teams that are out the tourney on Friday have this much influence. Which, listen, he is kind of yeah. right. The three teams. Well, Surge won. We know they voted against it. We think Boston voted against it as well. I don't know the other one. I know that FaZe, though. FaZe for sure voted against it, and Abizi's been saying <laughs> what you're talking about. And honestly, again, it's like, whatever FaZe think about it, can't blame them, because that's the, that's the way the game is played. They've got the best SMG duo in the game. If the SMGs are better, they can fry more. I guess that's the logic. Goes kind of goes both ways, because it's almost like, well... Sure, if the gun is better, the, the best players are used on that, then it's good. But also, if the gun is better, 
and you've got a bad SMG duo, then it kind of like helps them out against the ARs. So apparently, it was LA know. Thieves. I thought it was, it was LAT. I thought it was Seattle. I don't think it was Thieves because no, no, he's oh, saying the other three. He's saying the other three. He's saying oh, there was like, four one of them was LAT. But it was yeah, a one of them was LAT. Stream that that clip was where. I mean, if you want to play this clip, you can actually. I don't know if there's music in the background, but I got it. this was the clip of Fellow saying that it was Seattle that had the deciding vote and they oh, voted that, against. This is the one I it saw. From, yeah. It was from Ghosty's stream. So my assumption was that probably Thieves didn't vote against it, but maybe they did. I don't know. This is hey, the one I saw. very yeah. quiet. This is the one I saw. Seattle is the reason that the rival. Well, Lucius Gracias. Um, Seattle is the reason that the rival barrel was still in. Holy shit, we're blaming Seattle? Yeah. Damn, that's insane. They had the last vote that yeah. determined whether or not... They actually, they actually were the last vote. Yeah, we blame Seattle. They're obviously a part of a greater, a greater, you know, vote, but... Yeah, so, I mean, we clearly hear here, 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 that Seattle was the final. We don't know who the other teams are exactly, but Seattle is part of, of this problem. But here, how about this? Wait, I'm going I'm to take it this way. Do we think that taking the barrel off solves the problem, actually? It doesn't solve the problem, but it makes it harder to shoot. I'm all for making a gun harder to shoot. But then when we look at the stats, once they, they account, like, like the original one everyone reacted to and lost full about was this, this one right here, this TTK chart. This was the rival nine kills quicker at all distances. But they didn't account sprint to fire time. So they, they adjusted it, actually. So when it came to sprint, sprint to fire time, then the MCW does actually, at range, kill faster than the Rival 9. So... No, nah, the, 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 the Rival 9 still kills faster, though. You see, you see this? But it's, like, it's a little bit cheese because this would also be the case for the guns we were discussing back in the day. But it's like the back rival, in the day, flip. you could the not rival, hit all six bullets. Yeah, the rival, you also, ha it's harder to shoot the rival across the map. Yeah, it's yeah just, exactly. It's, just, like, the it's Scorpion easy. Evo from Black Ops 2 had it, a freaking insane kill, but, but time to kill. This hypothetical is obviously if you bullets. hit every single bullet across the map, then yes, it kills faster, but it's obviously harder to, to make five or six bullets yeah. rival than it is an MCW. So there you go. Yeah, for sure. But you've seen it. We've seen it where subs are challenging these MCWs across the map because they know that players that are as good as Simp, Hydra, and Kleenex and all these players can hit these shots to kill the AR across the map. It's not about the AR being bad. It's about these sub players. It's like a 40% players. gunfight, you know? Like, if you chal an AR across the map nowadays, if you're a good player, you probably win it. Not half the time, but not far off half the time. Back in the day, that... Bro you, used to, bro, you used to, bro, you used to be scared to challenge an AR back ever across the map. Back the oh, fuck, oh, fuck that! I'm not challenging that. It's fuck that! I mean, the funny thing is, time, the funny thing is as well. You know, speak about GAs. Everyone's like, "Oh, bring back ban and protect." You do realize that we had GAs on top of ban and protect, right? Ban and protect was stupid, man. Ban and like, protect people... was lit, bro. That that made that made it, again viewer experience. I'm all about viewer experience here. It made it so fun and randomly. MA got banned. Stock got banned, and now just four man awards. Yeah, 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 but, 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 but hear me out, yeah. But, yeah. Hear me out. We were the only team that banned stock, and when we banned stock, teams got pissed off and they broke the GAs and used rapid fire and high cal against us. So, what you know what I'm saying? That's scummy. Well, I'll fine. agree. That's scummy, but, but I'm saying that's protect what, made but, but, every but, map. Every, you wanted to tune in again, the viewer experience, bro. You wanted to tune in and just like watch what the ban and protects were going to be for the series because it could be wild. That's I didn't do you think I would prefer a system like that back in the game, but it just needs to be done very differently. Like there shouldn't be protecting. There should be That's like, what I said. There should be eight bands. Yeah, or even just what well, they should really have had. Because most of the time, six no, of the it, bands there's forty seven the atta there's forty seven attachments on the fucking underbarrel. You can bring in sixteen bands if you really want to, because you're still not gonna get <laughs> half of the fuckers out. Right? <laughs> you imagine the effort of that man. Six you imagine if we went for you, 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 mate, you, mate, you, you wouldn't even have chance to fight. You wouldn't even have to, you, you, you know the amount of time that you, you, wouldn't, you know the amount of time that you have. It was like fifteen seconds or thirty seconds or whatever it was. Yeah, you wouldn't yeah, even be able to you wouldn't even be able to find the right attachment if you wanted to. <laughs> Just, yeah. uh, he's like, oh, man, fuck, I need to ban the DR6 hand stop. What the fuck? So you got to scroll through page 17 to find the fucking thing. <laughs> what it could be that, like, I've thought this, right? You should just be each team has two bands they get to choose, and the bands can't be, I mean, ideally they can be attachments, but like, that ain't going to work nowadays. You can choose a weapon, you can choose 
going to be like a frag grenade so they have to use Tim Tech tears or something like that anyway. Because I think it did add something to the game when the guns were different. But the cheese was that when people would like ban stock like you guys did or when Killer's team would always ban... They would ban every AR so they had to use the Man of War. Like that was their strategy. But then on top of that you had like six of the things were just the GAs. Like you had to well, yeah, ban but you could, ima- ima- fire, imagine, high cal stuns, you know. Imagine you ban a gun. Imagine you ban the MCW now. The other guns are banned, so you'd force it. It'd be eight subs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, 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 I, I was rival. I was waiting to mention that problem. That in this game, you only have one choice. So all of a sudden, now you're gonna actually have four rivals just running around the map now. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but like, so obviously there's only one AR, and this swarm has been a joke since the game came out. All right, really? I'm just letting it be known. I I went bronze to iridescent, tack stance only, yeah. So that's hip fire only, pretty much, with the with the with the swarm. I done that and I managed it in sixteen hours. Bronze to iridescent ranked, hip fire only with the swarm. That gun is a joke. Yeah. I mean, in kind of uh, oh, go ahead, go go ahead. I was gonna say, and Haggy was the one saying like, "Oh, it's not that OP. It's not that OP." I promise you, if these pros actually used this gun over the rival, they would understand that that is that gun is by far way better than the rival. <laughs> like, yeah, the swarm up close, even from the beginning of the game, it's absurd how fast it kills. If you could, if from far, it actually, I feel like it's from far away, it's very hard to control. But if you put a red on it and you get you use it enough reps and kind of get good with it. Yeah, you can melt people from mid range to decently far enough where, nah, the swarm is the fastest fire rate SMGs in COD have always had some like weird factor of being OP. Vesper. I know, I know the chat saying like it's already GA'd. I know, but what I'm saying is, is that imagine like these pros actually used it from day one. That gun is better than the rival. Like, I know it's GA'd now, but it only got GA'd because of the fucking. Because of the devs, like, nerfing all the guns and whatever like that. I'm just saying, imagine, like, you know, Simp just brings out on land one time, 100 round mag swarm, ain't no one gonna say anything. <laughs> It'd be another spot situation, like, fucking, fucking laying it down, bro. Yeah, no. I, the game I, fell off. Yeah, no, the, 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 ga- the game... TJ's actually speaking facts here, though, like, yeah. because the flex roll back in the day was actually a flex roll. Gunless was known to be one of the, I mean, he was top two player in World War Two, probably behind Kenny. But Gunless was the best flex player. Like he could use the bar, he could use the STG, he could use the PPSH, and it was super valuable to the team having an actual good flex player. You were a good flex when you did it back in the day, Trey. Very versatile player. Priester was another one who could use both guns very effectively. Only a few players were really proficient on both weapons because it's difficult to use both and run at the correct pace and all this stuff. Nowadays, a lot of the flex players are just second ARs. And maybe teach us a point players like, are... some of these players. <laughs> flex players are just faster ARs. <laughs> yeah, it, doesn't even, it doesn't even exist. Like, half, of these like mother, half, of the, half of these flex players can't even use the rival. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, there's only a few that can. Kenny could, if you, if you wanted to. It's, it's the players that pull it out on Rio, you know? Like, yeah. some teams were using three rivals on Rio. People like Scrappy, they can clearly flex. But there's a lot of these flex players that actually are just frauds. And it's it's, it's like when do you remember when every time octane picked up the sorg and everyone like mocked him for it because he couldn't use it a good reason like, bro <laughs> my guy was so bad but you know but Sword that's tail. that's my point like obviously like he's an ar player like he doesn't use that gun he doesn't want to use that gun but if he picks it up like you can see why he doesn't use that gun but i guarantee listen I guarantee you put the rival in Octane hand. Now it's a different story. I promise you, you get beamed by that motherfucker. And that goes back to Ace's point with dynamic. And it goes back to my point that these subs do what ARs can do. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think the flex roll, again, this is why it's like frustrating sometimes when I talk about the show. I go, oh, like an AR player, like I say Sib or something, like, oh, Sib is a flex player. I'm like, bro, like, what is a flex to you guys? The guy only runs AR, basically. He, like we said, he's just a faster AR. Sure, he's technically on paper a flex, but he's an AR player, bro. Let's be, let's keep it a buck fifty. The flex these days needs to be figured out. The gu- but what's that fault here? Is it the players or is it the gun choices and dynamic? I'm gonna say the latter. It's definitely the gun choices, dynamic, and how these maps play out that are the biggest issue with why flex roll why the flex roll is not even the flex roll anymore it's just turned into second ar main sub 
and then the player who uses AR most of the time and then uses a sub on like one or two maps and that's it. I mean, like like you said, the flex player is just a faster AR player and, you know, that's... It don't even matter when the games are slowing down anyway. Um, I feel like... Imagine if Rio didn't get put in the rotation. You wouldn't even know what the... Like, you wouldn't even see Scrappy with a sub ever. And that's why it's nice to see some of these maps coming in where I wish there was none of these 2009 maps in where they actually, you know, because you could tell, I mean, you could run four MCWs on Invasion. No questions asked. A lot of teams Very do. It's happening a lot. Yeah, a lot of teams do. <laughs> you know? And I don't know about you, but that's very fucking stale to me. Like, if I see Invasion on the map set, I actually turn the stream off. You know, well, apologies, to, uh, ap apolog apologies to Tack and Ace, but, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, if they're going to be like, yo, Trey, do you watch that insane Invasion clip? I'd be like, yo, we might have to rerun that back because I did not tune into that. And, <laughs> you know, I, I, I feel like that's a lot of people these days. I mean... Going back to like how stale it's gotten right now, I don't know if you've seen it as well, but like I think I think COD have even given up on rank play because if you've not seen multiplayer rank play, there's no camo rewards. They've only put camo rewards in for Warzone, <laughs> so they've only put camo rewards in for Warzone. There's no rewards for multiplayer bar a weapon charm and a sticker. So I think even they've sat there and gone fucking hell, it's a bit stale this and it lads invasion, 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 invasion. And it comes down to like like this TJ thing is in flex player. Oh my god! What the hell? <laughs> my bad. So I'm keep talking. I don't know what happened. No, my shit just went bonkers. I don't know what just happened. Fle flex players don't want to flex and run a sub. If that, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like it's the same shit of what I've been talking about. Is that there's just no like the only flex gun you can run is the BP. Yeah, and we can all agree that is a bit fucking OP. Like good gun for sure. Yeah, great gun. Uh, one, one, one just devil's advocate argument I do have is that I think these nerfs, this nerf is going to force potentially the flex to matter more into this stage. Because now the rival is better, so its viability to use is a little more incentivized for players. So I think, do we actually see more rivals be used and potentially a 2-2, two, 2-AR, two, two, two sub split being taken out on some maps, unlike what we've seen in stage one and two, where it's mostly been a three AR, one sub meta most of the time. I mean, honestly, I think the pros should test out some ARs that are in the start of the game. Not test out, bring back some of them. And if this rival is so fucking good, like the pros should come together and use a different AR. Yeah, there's the Holger, whatever they banned day one, and then I think they nerfed Holger, it. Holger, so SVA, there's a bunch of stuff they can use. Yeah, exactly. Yes, that's a good point. Yeah, the SVA was another one. I don't even think the SVA was good, but apparently everyone started running it in scrim, so why not bring it back? It's a good point, to be honest. The pros sometimes, they come up with an idea that's dog shit, and then they have a way to fix it, and then they just can't seem to... There's just not enough IQ to put two and two together, is there? But the, but the funny thing is, is that we come back to this argument of, you know, oh, we, this one, let's, let's use this AR. The, the AR they pick, you know, kills a sub and they're like, oh, now the AR players are blessed. Like, oh, we've got to GA <laughs> that AR. You know, it's just a bad thing. every year, so, man. It, it is, it, yeah. it, it, it's, it's just a. I feel like we have this argument at least 75 times um, in, in the season of. AR players are blessed. Sub players are blessed. We got a GAS attachment. We got a GAS attachment. I mean, there was even talks of high grain coming back for the AR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, saw, I saw that happen. People on TL saying it only, or it was, I think it was Parasite saying we should bring this back. It only makes sense. Make it fair. Give them some velocity. So at distance, it's more more even cut. Possibly, I mean that that is possibly a solution. Or the barrel thing. I mean, it sucks that it's already been voted out. But the barrel thing is seemed like it made a lot of sense as well. We'll see what happens. I don't think anything's really going to change going to this weekend of matches. I'm assuming it's probably going to stay exactly the same meta. Just potentially we see a rival come out maybe one more time or instead of four ARs on an invasion, maybe we finally see a 3-1 or 2-2 two, two, maybe out it's here. Because, it's because we take so long to do it, though. I you mean, know, yeah. like four, day, four days away from the matches. Like, you've been using the same rival for the past, what was it, like four months? Yeah. And you give yourself like five days to actually decide whether you want to use the barrel or not. Like, 
I can see why people do say no. I can. I mean, four, I don't know. The eight four is kind of crazy to me. But speaking of back and forths, right? Speaking of back and forths, I got into a little bit of back and forth the other yesterday with uh, one of the OGs, Clayster. But we'll, let's let's talk about how it all started. Um, we do have this this breaking point, breaking news that Real will replace Eric Boom on the Miami Heretics starting roster per the team. In our episode fourteen point five, me and Trey spoke how they were trialing Real with Eric Boom and then with Vickel. But it looks like Real has taken the spot of Eric Boom, and Real and Vickel are going to be the duo now. Um, this, this tweet led me to think about something. I was really sitting there thinking, I said, wait a minute, how the hell did Miami get this man's visa sorted out in about a month and a half where Ravens couldn't figure it out and they picked him up during the off season. So they had from the off season to match one. Which I believe, again, if you, if you went from when the game dropped to the first set of matches, there was about a month and a half period of time between game drop and first match. Any objection there? Correct, right? It was in November, and then like late December, we had our first set of matches. Correct? So Yeah, that sounds about right. About right, correct? So there we go. In the same period of time, Miami had sorted out his entire visa. So that made me quote the tweet, and it led to this exchange right here. So I say a conversation needs to be had how Ravens couldn't get Real's visa sorted out, but Heretics got it done in a month. Clayster decides to ratio my bitch ass and type out because it has nothing to do with the org and everything to do with the lawyers. I reply, the org chooses its, own, its lawyers. Apparently, the law is super flexible depending on the lawyer. Who knew? Let's start with that conversation and then we'll jump to what Clayster says right after. Because I'm going to clarify something. Obviously, everyone decided to belittle me and say all this, not understanding two important key factors. Or three, actually. One, the org does choose its own lawyer. So if you have a shitty lawyer, that is their fault. First. Secondly, my family, we've had to immigrate quite a few people. As you can tell by my eyebrows, I ain't on the Mayflower in America. We came here. Hang on, I can. We came I can here. Tell you what lawyer, I can tell you what lawyers London use. Give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> My fail. Was it this one? Uh, let me, let, let, no. me let, let me hit point three, Trey. As you're searching, we've had to immigrate some people. I've worked on visas for my own sister-in-law. Secondly, third, most importantly, this is the most important point that I have confirmed as well. By the way. Every team, when you're, when you're organizing your visa to play for a certain organization in the CDL, the visa process restarts when you try to join another organization with a new lawyer. You're not getting hired by the CDL. Players are not contracted by Call of Duty League. They're contracted by uh, Optic, Phase, Ravens, individual assets. So that means... If you don't get it yet, Real was being contracted by the Ravens and the lawyer didn't do something right and led to him not getting on the team, which I reported on. And Clay, funny enough, ratioed me then too and again said, oh no, this is all BS, not true. Real, we're just waiting on his visa to get approved, which I at the time from sources had heard a different thing. And then he ratioed me and I got called out as a liar. I had to apologize. Hilarious, right? Funny how it all turns out. Then let's follow up back to the point of this. Heretics having to restart the process, right? Different organization, new lawyer, new process, new employer. They restarted the process and got it done in a month. So to finalize this point, 100% it has to do with Ravens having a terrible lawyer. And not either not caring or the lawyer not caring enough to finish Real's visa process. That is it. Bar, period, done, none, finito, nothing else. Go ahead, Trey. Trey, any update? Yeah, that fucking shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> this is a known fact. Like, like, what I will say about Clay, he knows how to operate social media to his advantage. He will say shit that... I don't know if he fully believes it's true, but 
it looks good for the organization. You're not going to bite the hand yeah, that yeah. feeds you. I get it. Clay's not going to sit there and be like, yeah, they use some shit ones. All right. Clay's he didn't not have sit to say anything, work. though. He didn't have to say any of this no, shit of that course, he said. Uh, that he of course he didn't. But the issue is, is that what did I say to you guys when Real started off and he needed to go get his visa? I literally told you, it just goes back to Trey never being wrong. I guarantee you they didn't even try. You think? I mean, they had to have tried. They had to have tried, yeah? But if they wanted to make it happen, you're telling me a multi-million dollar company could not make it happen? They should have hired Ina, bro. Ina's back in the chat. Welcome are you back, telling Ina, me? Dog. Are you telling me a multi-million dollar company can't oh, put forward a bit, a bit of money to, the lawyer, to a lawyer or, you know? Because money talks, yeah? We literally know this. Are you telling me that they couldn't just, you know... Yo, you know what? If we pay this, blah 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 blah. You know, we'll sort us out. You know what I'm saying? They've done the bare minimum, and guess what? The bare minimum gets you fucking nowhere. Yeah. Free and then you get yeah. I, like that's what I'm saying. If they wanted Real there, Real would have been there. Wait, I want that's a fact. I want to show the other time Clay did a very similar thing. Just I, I this is me clearing the air because again, I got smeared for this shit. And this really, this, I'm gonna be honest, this, this hurt me a little bit. Cause I got smeared when factually I was correct. And this really pissed me off, to be honest with you. This is my tweet, breaking. Oh, uh, I remember this. You shit, do remember this, this right? Fun. I got smeared of for this. I, this. I got smeared. And then Clay ratioed me. It's wrong. We were plan being and seeing if we could find a replacement for these matches. Jose's in his last, last steps of the visa process. Could get approved by this weekend. We're just making sure we have a fail safe. This was yeah, fake, guess, false news. Yeah, guess who told him that? London. The org, maybe? Yeah, of course. London sat there, bro. They're probably sat there. They're probably like, they probably terminated his contract. But the thing is, but the, <laughs> the thing is, is, Trey. They probably sat there and it was like, they probably oh, sat we there. Like, yeah. this ace guy. We got to clown this yeah, ace guy. Yeah, yeah. Let me just no, 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 like, this. Uh, no, we're gonna, we're, listen, listen, we're going to terminate his contract, but we're going to like make it out like, yeah, we're going to keep the lawyer involved. Let him know that, ah, oh, fucking hell, buddy. We can't get this sorted out, but you know. But but the thing was with this, the thing that, that again hit. If that was it, that would have been it. But again, the sources that I had, which I, I'm not gonna, I can't expose those sources. Obviously, on TL, like those sources were saying, nah, they're looking for someone to replace this guy. Like bar none, that was it. There were they, this this was so all this was caca bullshit. And then again, again, I don't W Clay for supporting his org. This is not a dig at Clay. This is uh, Willaster because it's his org. He's he's part of it. He's trying to look good for it. Become un, you know, make sure they don't, they know. Right, they've got he a nice jersey, them. and that's about where it ends. The blue is nice. So he's absolutely oh, okay. wrong no, in this no, thought no. here. Bare minimum. <laughs> Told you, bare. Clay's gonna listen when they're all said and done. Clay's gonna leave that all yeah, and I <laughs> just gonna violate it like I am because <laughs> like he got they did the search. Huh? Yeah, he Octane's not violating search because he's getting a nice paycheck. Boom! As soon as he's gone. Org was dog shit. Me, I didn't tweet nothing. Get dropped. Org was dog shit. Clay's gonna, Clay, Clay retire, whatever like that. Yeah, that org, motherfucker, they've just got a facility. It's not even a facility. Were, can someone said, I need that one of them to tweet a picture of the facility so we know what it looks like. I'm just very curious what it is. I need <laughs> oh to know. They were probably, what, 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 what was it? Was this, was this the last time I spoke to Ace? And I was like, it's probably not a facility. It's probably an apartment. <laughs> 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 moving going forward though then this happened right clay drops a bombshell after this right this is bombshell everyone i started seeing at to attack rabs after this next part it went crazy because i wasn't expecting this at all this took a turn clay then says the conversation should actually be about players playing in the league illegally in the u.s without going through their visa process smiley phase it, where's my damn, damn. damn. bro that's who, i thought this was getting deleted for sure i hit the screenshot on this see see who who is he on about here wow well there's, I actually, there's a deleted I tweet actually here there's a deleted tweet that. here though this deleted tweet should i was uh, it from should, should i say it was it from, I think was this, it from okay okay i heard i didn't oh was uh, this from cammy no like, it's not, cammy tweeted no. that it doesn't matter but like Okay, whatever, we can discuss that. But I think this tweet was 
before you say ace i heard some people i didn't see this tweet what it was but people said that it was talking i don't know if it was from jay nubsy oh was this was the was, nubsy. was this the nubsy tweet this might be the nubsy tweet that basically implied that it was a team that had made a change just before champs which then made people think that it was snoopy in boston that's where i'm gonna leave it ace okay Okay, right, listen, just say it, bro, so. because listen, this is, this is a big problem. Because... Right, you hate Snoopy already. Run it up. <laughs> get him deported. Oh my god, you're magic. <laughs> <imagine? laughs> you're, fuck, you're hilarious, bro. Oh, but that'd my... be the ultimate end to the Snoopy guy. Just <laughs> hate, hate, hate your heart. He reports him straight to Joe Biden. Me, yeah, me, me with immigration waving at the waving. Bye bye. Bye bye. See you. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay, it was. Okay. I won't say who it's from, but yes, the, the implication is correct that you guys are saying that is someone at champs decided to swap in a player and had them play. And by deduction and in the, re the replies to that tweet, which I, which I saw myself, people were implying that this was Snoopy. I don't know if there's truth to that statement, right? Because obviously I don't know the internals of the org. I don't work for Boston Breach. So I'm not going to say that, sit here and be like, as much as I'm the 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 choo choo, the conductor of the Snoopy hate train, I'm not gonna sit here and say I know any insider knowledge of that being true or not. But what do we think about this though? Do we think that Clay is wrong for bringing this up? Is this just some? No, it, no, he's 100 right. You can. I what I got told was I cannot. You cannot compete in the league without a visa. Like if you're not from the U.S., you need to have a visa. Like if you live in Toronto. Obviously, you have your Toronto visa. That's fine. But you cannot compete if you do not have a visa because you are being paid. It's like paid, you know what I'm saying? It's paid work. You, could, you have to have a visa to compete there. And if you don't, you are not allowed to play for the league or play in the league. And I got told that because I was asking the same question. Can I not just, you know, fly over and play? No, you're not allowed to. You need a visa to compete. So... Yeah, so I guess for Clay's point of view, it's more like, well, like Ravens might be a dog shit organization. We know this for sure. But <laughs> at least they are following the rules, I guess. Clay's point is that, well, yeah, we might have messed up a few times on the whole Real stuff and on previous iterations of this organization. But at least they ain't breaking the rules. Whereas Clay's saying that, well, somebody's breaking the rules. And that's basically what he gets into here. And obviously it ruffled a few feathers because people are trying to figure out, okay, who's he talking about? Because, I mean, he says players. It's not players, it's players. So people were looking through the situation. But it's the same thing, Trey. Like, things changed back in the day. I remember when, um, I don't know if I've ever told this story before, but I was, when I first started the channel, like 2019, so around London, I went to Anaheim the next month. And that was because the CWL, as it was back then, wanted me to commentate on challenges so i was going to fly out there i was going to like do some casting for challenges and obviously like the pay for everything fantastic i was just about to fly night before i flew i got an email that said hey yeah uh because of the visa situation we're not sure you're going to be able to work this event right because basically everyone just flies out to these events on the tourist feed and then you just show up to the event and you say well i'm hey. attending the conference <laughs> you, and, you, know, you show up you show up on an esther <laughs> You show up on an SD, yeah. you say, here to spectate a gaming event. Next thing you know, you've walked out with 20 racks on your, on your back. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I mean, non taxed I, I as well, time. because they ain't getting me with that LA bullshit. <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> love that, Trey. That is good work from you right there. Hey, hey, you that. did. Hey, this, this stays within our circle. You <laughs> stay away from me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nobody's allowed to clip any of this shit, by the way. Absolutely. But, uh, not. You know, yeah. this is how the process was done. I'm mean, sure it's still the same now for all sorts of esports, because it's like, can he really go get an event to like a visa to fly out there and play a challenges event or something? It doesn't really happen. Um, but this was the very time they just hired to thing, and like it was getting serious, right? Because the CDL was about to come around, and some new lawyer was like, not really sure we can have this guy fly over here on a tourist visa and pay him for work at the event. So then they said, can't do that, sorry. But if you want to just attend and chill out, then sound like <laughs> fantastic. That's what we'll do anyway take that shit i was i just wanted to be here for the vibes and the free food so it worked out for me but it did work out for some others and that was a big turning point because at the time there was like um it, i didn't really want to get into all the other drama but it was a similar thing for others 
time. Yeah, no, you, you, you can't like, I mean, I know they haven't changed it either because it's, it's a professional job. Mm. Like it's, you know, you are earning money in the U S being paid into a U.S. bank account, making U S doll hairs. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like it's a, and the visas we use are P one athlete visas. Um, you know, and you can't like for Cami, for example, like he has a visa, but like, it's not like he has a visa, but like technically he doesn't because he doesn't, play for them anymore you know what i'm saying so like it's like it's Mm, like he still has a visa but like he doesn't have a work visa because it's assigned to a hundred thieves but like he doesn't play for him anymore so like i mean okay i I mean speaking of i i I, I mean i was just gonna say i've been on a you know on a visa that wasn't assigned to anyone i got in and out the country perfectly fine because i don't check that stuff but i've definitely been on a visa that wasn't assigned to anyone when I got dropped from London, I was still flying around the flying around everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Like speaking in and out of, uh, England. Speaking of Cammy, just want to read his tweet, his reaction to this Clayster because he's one of the few pros that decided to respond. Uh, there's no way anyone would actually care if people did do that. The whole visa process has been holding people back for years when it comes to mid season changes. If you're not from the U S you're basically written off until the next off season, unless there's a big break, which We've spoken on this show quite a few times. Has been the case for a lot of players that get stuck and and their chances get ruined or halted because of the fact that teams need to pay and go through a visa process for them to come to the U.S. and play. So again, it sparks another conversation with Clay's with Clay's kind of argument: Should players be allowed to come in and play while their visas are getting worked on, or do they need? Should they have their visas already 100% done before they get a chance to sit down, practice, scrim, and play matches? It's kind of a distinctive it's, conversation, honestly. It's it's not even a conversation that they can have, though, because it's nothing to do with them. It's literally law. Yeah, you know. That's true. It's, it's not like, it's it's not like a boys. conversation. It's not, like, Cammy can say, like, everything Cammy's saying there is true. Like, facts. But it's not like it's an opinion of the league. It's literally law that you cannot make money like without a visa over there you know what i'm saying yeah like it's not it's not like a uh you know no one's gonna care if it yeah i'm sure no one cares if real had a visa playing for caroline or not (laughs) okay you know you you know you know what i'm saying like no one's gonna care if cammy joins a team and he doesn't have a visa right but it's the fact that like you can get kicked out the country type shit you know what i'm saying (laughs) that's why that's that's why Activision say that you need a visa to play. I can't, you know, if Snoopy did do it like that, I can't, I, I, you know, I can't say anything on it other than like, it's literally the law. Should there, I mean, which other uh, players might they be talking about though, right? Because I mean, the Canadian players, I imagine for Canadian, it's probably much easier to get the respect. Yeah, visa. for sure. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Um, but also I was thinking like the Surge guys, let's say, it's out of interest, right? Because they're based, they're, I'm not saying they're problematic for now because they're based in vancouver right so i imagine they've got their toronto visas and shit but when they fly over to play an event in the us do they have the appropriate shit for that i don't know yeah well this is my point so like that would be like the same thing as like they wouldn't need a visa to do that because that would be the same thing as like us coming like they have a they're they're contracted to make their money in toronto you know what I'm saying? In Vancouver and stuff like that. That's where they're contracted to make their money. If they win any money over here, if they win any money in America, it's essentially like gambling. That's what we used to get away with on the taxes. We yeah, anything we anything we made over here, it was winnings. It was deemed as gambling. It's no different to me going over to Vegas and winning, you know, millions of dollars gambling because I'm not like, you know, it's a gamble, you know, whereas it's different from like a guaranteed contract being paid a salary. Hmm. That's where yeah, your employment okay. comes that in. That makes sense. I like that. It so, is logical. Someone in the chat. Yeah, because that's what I always remember. Like, because you don't, like, you take your winners, your 20K <laughs> from your event that you won, and you go back to the UK, and you're like, I'm paying taxes on that shit. I want that gambling. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, pretty much. Because, you know, they deem it like, you know, you buy the team pass and then you've got to yeah. play well. You know what I'm saying? That's how we exactly. got, that's how yeah, we yeah. done it. Yeah. But, like, the whole visa thing is you are employed to a company that pays you, like, via, you know, whatever they do it. And then, 
it goes us into your us bank account you know like you need a visa a work visa to do that the, and that's why it's that's why it's fine for the Ameri uh for people that live in canada and stuff like that if they have a visa over there it's fine because they can travel over and come back but they're still employed in canada the chat's saying something interesting which i'm, I'm curious they're saying the way around this could be that you that ultra let's say or, or another team will collect the earnings in the home state or in the home country excuse me and then disperse it from there because then technically it kind of washes the money because the player is not receiving it personally their org is getting it and then dishing it out to them and paying them out in their home home country wouldn't that wouldn't that avoid any of these rules or laws or wouldn't that make it but so Toronto, I, mean, yeah, it, I guess that makes it, sense i mean that's how it's done nowadays anyway i imagine the all gets the money first yeah you, you get dished uh, yeah, out from your no, but like seattle yeah, the always gets the money first. canadian based entity despite the fact well actually i guess they are because seattle are part of Whatever it's called, enthusiast games. I, I, I think I think the I think the way to simplify it is wherever you are contracted is where you need a visa. Yeah, because you are employed and being paid monthly. Yeah, enthusiast gaming are Canadian, so it could be the same thing. You, you are play you are getting paid a salary monthly. That's where you need a visa to be there. You know, me and Rab can't just fucking hop over to the US, open a bank account, and get paid monthly, and then be like, "Oh, how the fuck are you doing this? <laughs> you got a visa?" And be like, "Yeah." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get deployed the next day. I'm yeah, lucky. exactly. And then you can't go back there. I think there's. A, I think people don't actually understand like the big risk of it too. Like, you get you get kicked out the country. Like, you ain't getting back in there. Yeah, like, the you US ain't getting no visa. In many countries, and uh, yeah, they take their borders seriously. So you know, Clay, I know who was voting for 2024. Yeah, <laughs> I, again, I, I, yeah, I, I think, but I think of whether it is Snoopy or the Seattle guys or Brezzy, or whatever he's talking, I don't know who he's talking about exactly, but a little weird of him to snitch in this way. But at the same time, he is pointing out law. And at the, that point, I mean, he's not, and no one's really wrong in this scenario in my mind. No one's really wrong. Everyone's just kind of, no. everyone's just speaking it's from a bit of a from... snitch though, right? Like, it's clearly not ratted a bit. I think it, uh, this is what most people, the general prevailing opinion seems to be that Clay didn't need to say this. Like, there's nothing necessarily for clay to gain by this the only thing that there is to gain is was that ratioing my bitch ass that's worse. what it was it was ratioing me okay, yeah, yeah. Got to, ratio to, you. To, to, to be fair he's defending the org that he plays for you know respect it but trust me don't do that <laughs> okay don't yeah well he that. defended the org but then he didn't have to say what he said next by like the only thing that clay has to gain from this is literally <laughs> getting some of his competition deported so that they can make chaps like that that is the only logical deduction hey um, fuck assuming it assuming it's teams at the bottom of the league typical hey, you, 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 like, you gotta what, do you gotta do you gotta do know, like whatever it is. I, no i do i do agree no one's wrong in this situation you got clay saying that people shouldn't be doing it you've got you got Cammy saying, well, you know, we're getting fucked over regardless. So, like, you know, why, why is there an issue? But no one's wrong. But the only person that is right is the fucking law. All right. And you just can't do it. Absolutely. Absolutely. But you've got this final tweet, actually. I don't know if you were going to look at this one, but there's another tweet. I already linked it for you, to be fair. I put it in the chat as well a second ago. It was the final tweet I had on the Clay Visa thing. Oh, I, just I, because I, I had it open, I thought. Someone put in the chat, Snoopy or Brezzy oh, must have oh, slammed oh. them that day in scrims. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably right, honestly, yeah. Yeah, I have that Brezzy one right now. Brezzy, Brezzy piss slams them and he's like, all right, you're fucking gone. <laughs> oh, my but, yeah. God. Like, this is what Clay Tree, like, the final thing you said, because he followed up with this um, today. And I don't know if he's just impression farming here, because, look, I, I know better than anyone that Clay knows how to kind of use the media and COD to his advantage. But still, it's pretty interesting. It seems to have pissed off some people. So I think he's referring to the tweet that we just looked at. Yeah. There's another conversation we can have too, but I don't think you're all ready for that one. So it's like, whenever we talk about conversations of kind of things behind the scenes, the first thing that comes to mind is Addy, but like everyone knows about this and we're going to discuss it in a second with the early stuff. So what else is Clay talking about, Trey? You got any, got any intel? It's just impression farming? Nah, he's not impression. I mean... Yeah, I mean he is impression farming, but like he's not. Like there is some there's 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 a bunch more things that have happened like behind the scenes that like I mean I'm not gonna I, like I would love to say it, but like I'm not gonna be that guy to Wait, five to, gifted and trailing so what you know like there's a there there's been a bunch of shit that's happened in the CDO that like has been Pussy. brushed away. And I know Rab and Ace knows about some stuff too, but like 
it's a it's definitely like a fucked up like like situation where like a lot of teams know a lot of teams and players know that like some other things have happened where you know it's fucked them over or you know it's one rule for one not for the other and you know that's that's where we're at with with this kind of stuff and you know he is impression farming but he isn't wrong and i think everyone kind of knows that the day the day apparently that clay decides to hang up the sticks is the day tactical reb makes a million dollars on a video because holy shit he has some stuff he wants to say and clearly he's holding back so maybe the day he hangs him up is the day we get to hear more about it but someone who is going to be leaking some stuff for us is wait wait, wait where's trey boy where's trey boy oh Oh, I missed Trey Boy. Oh, I trolled uh, the transition. We bottled the transition. I bottled mate. it, bro. That's my guys. It's almost good though. Like you, were, you went hard ace because you instigated this whole Clayster stuff, and then Trey instigated the whole Illy stuff. So nah, bro. The thing, thing is, yeah. Thing. No, the thing is with this Illy thing. Let me see right. these boys. Let me is, is is that what we're get, is that what we're getting into? Yeah, yeah, into yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I'll get the right. clip right now. So the, so the thing with the Illy thing is. Me and Ace spoke about this, all right? And I go on my stream, and I don't know who's running this spawn up GG, all right? <laughs> but you're fucking, you're fucking killing me, all right? You're fucking killing me. I uh, respect, right? I forget his name now. Respect my guy, spawn up GG. Because everyone thinks I was impression farming when I said it, yeah? All I said was, because me and Ace had a discussion about it prior to the stream, all right? All I said was, I know what's going on with Illy, but it's not my place to say it, and I'm not going to say it. All right, because it's not. That's a thing that he has to say, and I'm not here to, you know, put out someone else's business. I got the that's clip. not me saying it. I got the clip. Let me, yeah, let me throw it run, 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 run the clip, bro. Yeah. Also, and whoever's running, whoever's running this account, I'm fucking on your ass. Also, I, I didn't bottle it. This is Rab's fault. At the end of the day, it's Rab's fault. The notes were wrong. Okay, let's get this going. Wait a minute. Let me turn on the volume. Boom, boom, boom. All right, ready? This is Trey deciding it's a good time and he's not remembering that CDL Clips is in his stream at all times. Curious about Ellie. I know what happened, but like, this is one of those things where I'm just not gonna say, all right? And I know like, you're gonna be like, oh, you can't do that, you can't do that. It's just, that's just the way it is, bro. Like, obviously, I know what's happened, but like, I'm just not gonna tell you. How many gifted it has? I, it's, it's nothing bad, like it's, it, it's just like, it's just like one of those things. But Illy was never banned, and he will never play for Seattle again. I mean, he could play for Seattle, but I don't think he wants to. And I don't think Rambo wants him there either, if you catch my drift. I'm so curious about- There we go. That's the clip that started it all. What do you have to say for yourself, Trey boy? That's crazy, Trey. I can't believe you leaked that. Can't I believe you're, you're, a, you're a freaking no. leaker, bro. L leaker. I mean, bro, everyone sat there and was like, fucking, oh, this guy's clip farming. No, I'm not clip farming because I didn't know that fucking thing was going to go out there. I don't care. Someone, was, someone said to me, oh, he's try bro's trying to stay relevant. <laughs> if I wanted to stay relevant, I would have leaked it, you fucking idiot. Think. No, the thing is, all right, the thing is, is, like I said, I'm not out here to out someone else's business. Yeah, like there's a bunch of shit I know about the CDL, that, like the clay stuff. I know a bunch of things behind the scene that's happened. I'm not going to go out there and out it. It's not my place to say anything. Same with the Illy stuff. Yeah, Illy's not been banned. He's not been, he wasn't banned by the CDO. Like, we, we literally had this discussion on, what was it, 14.5 or whatever it is, or the dope check. We literally had this discussion. He wasn't, he wasn't banned. He was put to the side. He came back to have a trial. Didn't go to plan. Now I don't know what's going to happen with him. Does he go back in Seattle? Probably not because I have a feeling him and Rambo have probably got some beef. Because in my opinion, he was the best player. Obviously, he put him to the side. He probably wanted to play. Rambo has obviously said no. Done and dusted. He's on the side again. His tryouts didn't go to plan. He's back on Seattle. He's under contract over there still. Do what you want with that information. Right, okay. I just had a thought, right? I don't know if you guys have been following Counter-Strike at all. There was a bit of drama on this team, Falcons. So they're the Saudi-owned team. They signed, like, some great players, like Zonic, formerly Australis coaches over there. 
And then they had this guy called Boros, who was like a very talented player from, I forget exactly which country, but from the Middle East, basically. So it made sense for them to sign him on. But he was playing with Majisk and some of these other veterans. And there's a bit of feeling in CS that they basically wanted him gone. He was a good player, but they weren't happy with him for various And they effectively put him in a position where he was inevitably going to play bad. So then they had an excuse to drop him. That's a theory. We don't know if it's true. But I'm looking back on this whole Lily interview, bro, and I still can't believe go out there and do the interview. Like, still something about that makes me think that it's like, I don't know about sabotage, but if somebody wanted Illy to not, because they must have known what he was like, because he must have been common like that. They were talking to him mid game and they let him go out there and do the interview. Ray, Ray's, his probably, mind. Ray's probably around to be like, Illy, you're good to do the interview. He's like, he's like nah. Nah, nah, I'm not, nah, nah, I'm not good, not good. Ram was like, you're fucking going out there and you're doing it, all right? Oh, you're going, kiddo, yep. Because I've got Brezzy on the back burner, right, and he wants in. <laughs> exactly, like, could you not see a world in which there was some, I mean, I couldn't believe it on the day that they let him do that shit. And I still can't believe it today, unless you want to come up with other explanations. It was fried, to be fair, but I mean, it's a weird one. The frustrating thing is that Illy, it doesn't look like he's coming back in the league, I mean, to go to Rocker, did some trials over there. That's not when they get gunless now, as of course we discussed the other day. At least been back there a bit, like he was spotted on Dashy stream yesterday. I don't know if you have that clip as well, Ace. Indeed, but I do. Indeed, I do. A little Let's... clip of that one. We can play it real quick. Let's watch this this random teaser of Illy just popping into the stream randomly. Oh, shit. <sighs> like then I touch my face once, and then like I'm just brain dead. You being allergic to weed is like. <laughs> I think. Yo, what's good? Yo, wait, is that Ender? No. Yeah, Ender. Good. We're live, we're live, what's good? Oh shit. Oh, we're just playing ranked. Well, I'm watching oh, ranked right now because I just what ate. The fuck? Wait, Ender, the, yo, the Pope is here! The <laughs> yo, Pope is here? That's the fucking goat. That's actually the goat. Yeah, I pulled up. And, and that's literally it, by the way. That's all it is. He literally just says hi, yeah. and then <laughs> he was also the they say he's lot there live, and he's like, holy fuck, gotta go, bye! This did. It, it reminds me of that. Um, it reminds me of that SpongeBob meme. You know, when he's like looking outside the window, watching everyone have fun, and he... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, the he's watching. Man. He's watching all of his boys that he grew up with playing S and D and stuff like that, having a great time in the CDO, and he just can't get a fucking look in. Um. Yeah, I, I, I do don't feel... want him back. Yeah. You don't want to play for them. It's another year of problems for Illy. It, to me, it's like, kind of goes both ways, because as much as everyone's on that shit, from a competitive integrity perspective, anyone taking that shit, certainly today, I, I struggle to have that much sympathy for. You kind of know what you're doing. You know that it's not really allowed. You know that there's going to be backlash if something like this shit happens as it eventually did. And let's be real, they use it because it's performance enhancing. So all of a sudden, you're out of the league because of it. I struggle to have that much sympathy. Now, if he's really struggling with like a bad addiction, then yeah, you know, I get it. And it is tough. And what frustrates me the most is that it ain't fucking good for you. Um, but, you know, maybe, I don't know, if, if I'm Rambo, I'm thinking, can I trust this guy? Like, I want to criticize Rambo, and I will. Don't worry. We're going to get there. But at the same time, it's like, can I trust Illy to play an online league match without popping some pills or some caffeine tablets? I don't know if I can. And at that point, I mean, can I put him back in, in good faith? Uh, wait, I, I'm, not a, I'm not too much of a fan of this take only just because people are grown, right? Like these are, we're talking about grown men here as much as we want to talk about them like they're gamers and like have this like immature kind of personality. It's a grown man, right? It's a grown man. If he wants to take a caffeine pill or drink a Red Bull or drink five Red Bulls, he has the constitution, the liberty and the freedom to do so. We have no reason to say yes or no. Secondly, with the, you know, the ADHD, Adderall, whatever it may be, we don't know the internals of the situation. It looked visually bad for sure. But at the same time, he could have prescriptions, medication uh, for himself. And again, if you see abusing it, is he not? Speculation is one of those things that I, I, it's, it's our kind of job to do so. I do agree. But at the same time, I don't want to sit here publicly and just be like, can he play a match? Of course. He's one of the best players. He was on Optic. He, got, he was one of the best players that we saw in the SCD scene ever. 
I think he, he's one of those guys that, yeah, sure, maybe he's having a hard time right now. But to sit here and say, can I trust that he's not going to take a caffeine pill or whatever, he has every right to do so. He's a grown man. Okay, you can take a caffeine pill, but like, he can't smoke meth before the game. That's not allowed. So, according you know to I mean? who, Rao? According to who? I believe I'm in like, liberty. Okay. Like, <laughs> fair enough, right? <laughs> take what you want before games, I guess. But I don't know. Like, from my perspective, if you're doing something that you kind of know is against the rules, then you're literally cheating. And it's difficult to have sympathy for me from that perspective. Maybe that's a controversial take, but I believe that. If you're, well, and, uh, question for you now. I have a question for you now, specifically. In other esports, esports in general. If you're prescribed Adderall or Ritalin, prescribed by a doctor, do you still consider it cheating? No, not if you're prescribed for an actual medical issue, if you are taking the correct amount of your prescription. But if you're deliberately taking more than you're allowed, that you are deliberately attempting at least to give yourself what you believe to be a competitive advantage, Fair. which is no different in some form of cheating. It's like, okay, I used to swim back in the day. You'd, that was my sport. You'd get people before swimming races, fucking pumping shit tons of asthma. They didn't have asthma, but they'd get their little asthma pump thing and they'd be pumping that shit in. Because, you know, I don't know, whatever's fucking in that shit, like oxygenated, whatever. You'd get away with that shit, nobody cared because, oh, I've got asthma. But, you know, half the bloody league is pumping these asthma tablets well, despite it, not having it. If it's not, if it's not going to fucking keep you alive, then you don't need to take it. If you're prescribed it, listen, prescribe, listen, prescribe, Adderall is banned in some other sports too, even if you're prescribed it. Is it? Interesting. Even like with, the, even times, with yeah. the prescription? That, that's the, that's the caveat. That's the asterisk. Yes, every there, time. There, 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 there is, there is other performance hearts and drugs that are prescribed that are banned in other sports. No, people that actually had asthma, I'm not having a problem with that. What I'm saying is, I know for a fact there were people that either didn't have asthma or they said, oh, I've got asthma, I need this thing because I'll just get that for free. They would then be pumped for that shit during the event. You know, it's like, I looked at that shit. We looked at that shit. We're like, come on, are we, are we actually, serious right now? Wait, I actually don't know per like medical standards if a league can block you if you're prescribed something. The NFL, NBA, MLB all have Adderall in their banned substance list. If you're prescribed, if they prescribed it, yes, I if imagine, you're prescribed it. I, even if that's not the case, like I imagine that they would do proper testing. The, the even if you even if you have a script in the NFL, you get banned. In, there is. You know, it's very interesting. I was not snitching, by the way. I just thought it was strange. I would still win the race. <laughs> still I, I, cook I, these kids. I, I'm definitely checking this Adderall thing. Easy he Max said it. There's a few people in the chat that are saying it. Players are allowed to take Adderall. This is from the NFL.com, by the way. Players are allowed to take Adderall only if approved by the league for medical reasons. Again. Yeah, so, okay. So you, you, do, you do have to run it by the league, and I, obviously I'm assuming you need to have Yeah, and I, I guarantee they say no every time. Because guess what? Adderall ain't fucking keeping you alive. Not true again. I scrolled down some more, baby. The league had approved. So there's a former NFL player, Eben Brighton, who was suspended for Ritalin. The league had approved Brighton's use of Adderall, but not, not Ritalin. So he used Ritalin and they got a four-game suspension. So there are extreme caveats, which I think, who knows? Should we see something like this in the CDL, in an esports? Do you think it's worthwhile to have something like this executed? I mean, uh, my, a, I, I mean, I mean, I'm gonna be real, bro. Like, if I'm a European player and I can't get it, yet someone else can get it, like, how is that fair? I mean, that's that's just international. That, that's country law. That's beyond us. Well, how, 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 that has nothing to do with the league. You know what I'm saying? The league, the league. No, I don't. Not really. <laughs> no, I'm saying the league can't get. I should be. I, 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 okay, but I should be on the same playing field as everyone else. Right, but you're, the laws of your country, that's like, I feel like that's like a, I don't know, that, 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 that's an interesting, like, non-common denominator I didn't think about how Europeans can't get it, but in America, it's readily prescribed to everybody, no, anybody, I'm, basically. I, I'm, I'm saying, I, like, as a European, I can't go over there and get it prescribed. Well, you can't? Why not? I, I don't think so. We, I don't think we've ever been able to. If you have, like, if every, you have residency here, I think you can. If you have a doctor here in residency, why couldn't you get it prescribed? Then you got to talk to one of the pros that, you know, they, they had Jesus, the, Rav. the direct line. It's true. I don't know how this shit I mean, works. no, that's, no, that's what we had to do. 
I, I like I said, when I used to take Adderall for it, like when we played COD, like that's what we had to do, bro. <laughs> You had to go hit the plug. Crazy, <laughs> I went into like three or four different yeah, pharmacies no. with this little thing. You, 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 you had to go hit up the plug, you know? Okay. Okay. Well, okay. So speaking of. Like, it's the same shit when fucking the Tour de France is going on. Lance Armstrong is on the steroids. They're all on roids. And the funny thing is about the Tour de France is that riding it on steroids is actually way safer than not because it's, it's uh, absurdly like taxing on the body. But. Like, if you're cheating for competitive advantage, that is what it is. The question I would have is, like, is Illy a caffeine tablet merchant? Can he play well without it? It's a question that I would have, genuinely, if I was on uh, Surge. And it's a question that I would have if I'm in a search of Rocker, because the rumor is that Rocker were going to sign him. And I don't know if that's because there was an issue with his buyouts, because let's be real, Seattle are bad at that type of stuff. But the prevailing theory is, from what Parasite said, is that he trialed with them and didn't really impress. They didn't sign him. Which maybe should be expected. He hasn't played Pro-Cod in a while. But still, I think there's something to say on that. Because he was performing just so well. And then you see the interview and I'm like, look, I do think Illy's a great player. But at the same time, even when he was on Optic and he was dropped from Optic and they never released him officially, there have been rumors that there was more to that than just the whole thumb thing, you know? And um, maybe in hindsight, you can see what I might be getting at. But I don't know. I think... What you get, what you get now, Rob. My only touch on that is just, I think someone with that level of skill who clearly on his way up, I'm going to assume, didn't, wasn't cracked out on, whatever, on the amount or whatever he was on today, can do it again. Um, how much that's affecting him currently, I'm not sure, but... He, I think it becomes very much psychological whenever you rely on feeling like you need something else to perform or you feel like you're at a competitive disadvantage when you don't take something. I think that's the biggest factor as to why maybe Inder or even other pros continue to take something. Like that's like maybe they're prescribed or not prescribed because they feel like they need it or else they can't compete. But in reality, you're a great COD player regardless whether you're on it or not. You came up not really taking a million milligrams of it so I don't know. I think Illy could. Still I agree be great. with that take. To be fair, yeah. like I don't think, I don't think it should affect his performance. But I think like it's the mental side, right? Yeah. It's like, well, you know, it's the same very thing that Hook went through when he was on it, and then, he, and he was like, I actually played as well. But I think mentally, he probably thought like, you know, if you've got into a series and you pop some of these pills every single series you played online, and then you don't. You're probably going to be thinking, shit, I might get fried. Yeah, the, fir the first time you get fried, yeah. the first time you get shit on is going to be like, oh, I know exactly what happened. You have your excuse. You have your out, basically. I mean, to be fair, though, like, it's kind of glorified. Like, even, when you, even when you're coming up, like, it was, like, deemed that thing that you had to take to be good. If you, did, like, if you played against people that took Addy and you didn't take it, like, it was like, oh, you're automatically going to get shit on. Hmm. Like that's where it like really stems down from. I mean, it gets it gets. There's levels to it, man. Even when I was I competed, like it it was it went deeper than that. It's like, oh, you're you're taking Concerta. <laughs> you don't know about Addy, baby. Like you, there's different levels to even the Teed game, which was something else that was <laughs> hilarious too. Oh, you're on caffeine. Oh, I'm on Ritalin. Oh, I'm on this. Oh, you're on Ritalin. I'm on Addy. Like literally, that even that was a di different discrepancy into what you're saying, Trey. Like this guy was on this. Oh, the the you know these this team is only on this. This team has this. I don't know. It's I mean, I took I I I took Addy for a year straight back in Black Ops Three, and after Black Ops Three, I was like, I'm not taking this shit no more because I didn't like it. And then that was the year I won. The year without it. Yeah, the year without. Well, I I don't take it. I've taken it more. I've <laughs> taken it more after COD than I did when playing COD. Hmm. Mm. Interesting. See, success was found when he stopped taking it. Basically. Most successful I mean, uh, stop taking it. Yeah, I mean, like, I just didn't like the way I felt on it when I played. So I stopped taking it. I only, that's when I got into my Pepsi Max and chewing gum arc. Lovely, <laughs> lovely yeah. combo. More dangerous than the Addy, exactly. But that, that's yeah. why I say, back to Illy, like, that's why I say that I think it might be psychological more than anything else. But there, I have stories of other sources of players who stopped taking it and actually got much better. Like, comms got better. They stopped making faded plays. They got better literally playing COD when they stopped it. F no questions asked. So, I think if Illy gets over the mental hump, 100%, he'd be, he could get back 
into form, SND Demon, guaranteed be good, 100%. But speaking I mean, on, uh, oh, you, well, go ahead, go ahead, Trey. I was, I was going to say, I think the funny thing is, you know, when Slasher, I know you know this, Rab, um, Slasher used to take those crazy, like, energy drinks, the little shot things that could, like, grenade energy or something like that. Mm hmm. Yeah. <laughs> bro, he used, to be, he used to get them on some, like, dodgy website. We were like, bro, like, it's Slasher, it's Slasher would always be. Slash would always because they were just like heavy caffeinated, like you know, go crazy tight shit. And we were like, Slash was complaining about like you know, players taking Addy and stuff like that. <laughs> we used to always joke around with him saying he's taking the equivalent of that with us, <laughs> whatever he's drinking in those fucking drinks because they looked scary, bro. They weren't some <laughs> five hour energy, bro. Yeah, what was dissolved in those? That's what I want to know. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, it's a fair point though. Like, something at the end of the day, I cooked up like. If you ain't cheating, you ain't trying, baby. Hey, man. At the end of the day, let's look, at the end of the day, let's talk about let's talk about this clip here from Pred on Kenny. No, 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 we got to talk Rambo. We got to talk Rambo before we get to this. Oh wait, we got, we got Rambo to talk. Guys, oh, I gotta dis we gotta discuss the whole Rambo piece here, right? Because, like, do, am I gonna be the one to go on this Twitter account this time, or Ace? Do you want to uh, do okay. it? Okay, right, give me a second. Give me a second. <laughs> I, think I did it a few weeks ago. Trey did it. Do we, like last week? Dude, we have to have we we gotta get uh Roosevelt or someone to make a graphic for us, the Rambo Twitter update, like a little transition, and we gotta be on his yeah. Twitter and see this week did he did he tweet or not. We just need a small this week, transition. Did he tweet? I know what he tweeted. From, oh, I don't know, maybe you tweeted something since, but like, go. I got it. I don't, I, don't believe it. I don't think he has. We got it. Ooh. Head coach. Has he tweeted since Rambo the Godzilla three? Ooh. And... Nope, March seventh. He <laughs> back, baby. We are back. He must be. He, he must be enjoying that fucking. This is my um... favorite segment on the show. He must. The he must be he, enjoying he that. Um, that fucking that finish move a bit too much because he's been fucking. He grind. <laughs> he hasn't tweeted since. He's been grinding that move. <laughs> I think that's his pin tweet or some shit. But yeah, so like Jordan, the thing is with Rambo, coaches. We talk about coaches quite a lot on the show. We people on other shows don't seem to like to do but for good reason if you were a good coach sure you get credit if you're a shit coach you should get criticized mw19 rambo comes in he coaches the boys on the dallas empire he wasn't there for the entire time start of the game he had to get his visa stuff sorted tommy i think was there kind of first tourney of the year he was coaching them a little bit rambo steps in they have a great year they improve illy shotzi become great players shotzi wins mvp of the league they win a LAN event, they go to online, they win a good few LAN of, online events, they win the world championship, bang. Rambo, what a coach, right? On paper, that's the theory, but of course, you got Krim over there, you got Claire over there, right? So you look back at it in hindsight and you say, well, how important was Rambo to that team's success? There's a debate on that. Next year, Dallas Empire, of course, goes into Cold War. Problems with the team. Hook eventually gets dropped. Look at the minimap type thing. Um controversial in and of itself the team still has an okay year they didn't win but it was respectable enough and it felt like rambo and shotzi and Krim were kind of having a reasonable dynamic but Krim maybe wasn't the best teammate that year and therefore when the optic merger happens they go their separate ways rambo then ends up on optic and the season starts great they win the event but then the illy stuff happens and then there was the whole question of how to manage that situation running that through to the rest of the season general comes in pro Luke comes in Ily then comes back but not really because he was still injured he told scum but champs he was still injured the whole management there was kind of suspect rambo was making youtube videos and then the next year the dashy stuff happens right the big drama it all blows up rambo then comes out on that stream that they did explaining the dashy drop dashy weren't happy about it and he drops the absolute bombshell about the bowling calling ray the government and talking about the fact that they would watch minimap only VOD and all this type of shit. Then Rambo gets dropped. He's out of there. He's still making YouTube videos. He gets dropped from the team. Dachi keeps staying on Optic, of course. Then he goes to Surge, right? And the question was, all right, can Rambo prove how's it going to go? It's going to be Illy over there versus Optic. It's going to be Rambo against Optic. Like, how's that rivalry going to be? Because Surge have been a, at least a relatively competitive organization for the last couple of games. You know, talking to his dog during maps unmuted. Yeah, like this type of stuff. Sensational drama. But this was a redemption arc year for Arsites, for Illy, and for Rambo included. And Rambo builds a dog shit team. Like I said it from day one, I didn't like their roster. The only reason why they were looked anywhere near good at Major One and during the qualifiers is because Illy was 
breaking them, especially in Search and Destroy. The team wasn't. No, they were they breaking GAs sense. every fucking time. Breaking GAs, like, you know, and surely the coach is something to care about that as well. Illy gets out of there for reasons that I guess Rambo made that decision and wants Illy gone. Therefore, Rambo don't want to bring him back in and he doesn't want to play for it. So it's like for the last three years in a row, since MW19, we have Rambo getting into some sort of internal team dynamic conflict. And basically, every year his teams have got worse in some way. So, you know, at some point, you've got to look at the man in charge of the whole operation, given that he ain't tweeting shit. Is he taking any accountability for this? Maybe internally, but not, we're not seeing it publicly. He's not tweeting out, look, yeah, sorry to the fans, et cetera, et cetera. Like, what does Bro do all day? I don't know. <laughs> If that wasn't the biggest hater of Rambo speech I've ever heard, yeah, you just like that guy? holy hell. All right, I mean, no, I'm like, Rambo, he, uh, no, he's not. I mean, but I am wrong, dude. That the funniest thing I've ever read in chat is Rambo Jong Un. That's the funniest thing I've <laughs> oh, ever oh read God. in chat. I think of all time. I will say this, but there is some accountability needed from the Seattle side. Whether again, I always wonder: is it the coaches that are making these moves? Is it the GMs? Is it the organization, the management, someone above them telling them what they can and can't do? If all of this considered is Rambo's doing solely, like it's this is him causing a lot of this with the optic dramas, this drama um, causing some conflict, like uh, Trey mentioned with with Illy and stuff like that. There's some potential conflict there. Yeah, at, at a certain point, you have to assess the fact that a coach is causing the rifts on your team and, and, not, and not personable. What is, the, what is the point of a coaching cod but essentially being personable, managing personalities, and making sure the team structure is positive and, 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 and going in an upward direction? If he's causing strife, if he's causing conflict, that's literally blowing up your team and essentially is 70% of what a cod coach's job is. He's doing wrong if this is all true. I mean, listen, at the start of the year, the, the coach obviously picks a player or two players that he wants to work with. During the year, it's the players that decide who they want to play with. Let's be real. That's true. The players always decide who they want to play with. It always starts with the coach. Coach is like, fuck, who do I want? You know, you got, you got some smart motherfuckers that are like, we need, we, we need selling draws on this bitch. All right. <laughs> And you got some motherfuckers that think, ah, oh, you know what we need? We need to pick up abuser who's been frying with an AR, put him on a sub. You know, we've got the abuser, AR, Slayer. You know what we're going to do? Whack him on a sub. I don't know if someone's brain fell out there is halfway through the fucking, <laughs> halfway through deciding. But when I'm deciding who I want on my team and my, and my star player runs an AR dropping absolute bombs, and I go, he might be better on a sub, he might. That there tells you all you need to know about that goddamn fucking roster. <laughs> I have and a, even now, right? I, like, I, have, a I have a bombshell, I have a bombshell, I have a bombshell. Bombshell! Hey, yo, I dro hey, I'm dropping the bombshell sound effect. Listen, chat. In the next few minutes, we might have... Everyone get ready. Austin Slasher Litigo coming on <laughs> Dope Check in the next few minutes. I'm just letting y'all know this is about that. This may happen in the next few minutes here. Go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut right, you off. Announcement of announcement of an announcement. Holy okay. shit. Yeah. Okay. Just, I, I got the update what right now. What are you going to talk to him about? Uh, uh, see, see I wonder. See. I wonder. <laughs> well, Snoo well, Snoopy's getting gone, isn't he? Fucking hell. Sasha's going to fucking say that he's been playing illegally. Fucking. <laughs> <laughs> no words in the man's mouth, okay. Uh, oh, it's I, a joke. I will let you guys okay, but jumping ahead, uh anything else on the Rambo situation? Sorry to cut you off. I'm sorry about that, but they, they, I got very no, excited it's, there. It's, I think I said what I wanted to say. Yeah, like you have you have one you chance can't. to redeem yourself. If you have one chance to redeem yourself, you put together a roster that wasn't very good. In my opinion, you picked up one of the most promising challenger players in Europe and absolutely ruined him. And yeah. And the last thing that you've goddamn tweeted was about Godzilla throwing someone at a wall that he done in Vanguard. You've not you've not addressed any of the fans. Bear in mind, I love Rambo. All right, I like I like him as a person. All right, but this isn't you know 
The only person that's tweeted out sorry to the fans, I'm pretty sure, is Abuser. Like, mm. Ray, you're sat, you're sat there, you're coaching them, you're the, G, you're the coach, you're the GM. You might as well be running the fucking... You might as well be running the show. Tweet something, let someone know what's going on. Yeah, we've had to bench Illy due to this, or Illy's not going to be playing. Oh, we've bought him Brezzy, can't wait to... We bought him Brezzy, can't wait to work with him. So, yeah, just something, uh, bro. <laughs> Tell you something. O four is gonna join. You ain't gonna hear from Ray until the rest of the year when he tweets out looking for a new job in esports. <laughs> Jumping ahead. You might have kicked harder than me. Yeah, no, that was yeah. that was that was we. I don't know. As a trio, I don't know if we've ever roasted someone harder than that roast off right there. I'm just saying that was I, a crazy trio Apple, roast. Man. Like I. <laughs> I'm a hater. I'm, I'm I mean, you know, up. I mean, you know me. I do everything for a laugh, but like sometimes I'm dead serious. Like, bro, we've got to start addressing some situations, bro. Like, you've been pissed on. You've been getting slammed. Not even a goodbye to our cities. Not even all this. It's <laughs> throwing someone out. <laughs> uh, I think I think Austin's ready. Come on, should we watch the last two clips or just get him in here straight? Get him in it. Get him in it. Right, I need to hear my brother. Like, let me, I let need me, to hear my boy. Let me add him in here. One second. I need to hear my boy. Let me add someone to this call. Give me one second. Chat. Sorry for I that. I didn't think we were getting this until the end of the season, so get him in there. I'm shocked that this is happening right here. Hey, uh, yo, has anyone got any... Uh, yo, has anyone got Illy's dealer? I need to be locked in for this. Uh, actually, I need his Discord, so we're gonna watch. We're gonna watch two things that we love. Two mm -hmm. things we love really quick, which is optic. Of course, we love optics. So we're gonna watch a couple clips of Pred addressing uh, Kenny. Ke Kenny calling him out for blacking out. We saw that clip la on fourteen point five, I believe, with me and Trey. So let's watch the update from Pred directly about what happened, and then we'll get Austin in the call in a few seconds here when he sends me his his Discord. When I was after that, I was like, yo, yo, like, why shouldn't we done this? Bro, like, that shit is like, that shit's so funny too. I actually found that hilarious. I remember when we, we like watched it back, we ended up watching it back, like the, that whole sequence, and it's like, we were still f Even if I did what we said we are gonna do, we were still f Even if we got up at 10, we had two, we had an extra two seconds. But like, the only way we win that map is if we get a full wipe. That's it. Other than that, like, we still fucked. When the game's so intense like that, bro, like, People are like, yeah, no, nah, people people definitely gas. Oh my god. Ken is, Ken is keeping Freddy in check from walking out, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Ken my dad, dude. It just shows that you guys keep it 100%, bro. We all want to win. We all want to win. No one's gonna, no one will ever say anything in that team that's like, what the fuck? Did you really say that? Or like, get butt hurt. It's like, everyone's just trying to win, dude. We're all competitive as fuck. I just, I'm just mad at myself, dude, because I'm just mad at myself because I feel like I played so well against every team. And people are talking about like the whole black. What do we think about this clip of Pred saying, "Yeah, Ken is yeah, Ken is my dad, guys." What do we think about? I this? mean, I mean, first of all, Pred's losing his accent. Mm, mm. He's, uh, he's he's starting to sound American. I don't know about you guys. Secondly, why is he playing rank play? Why is he not in gym? Um, what the fuck? We trying to say, bro? <laughs> Everyone was roasting him, saying that not as big as he, he sat there playing COD. He should be in the gym, not playing COD. Everyone was roasting him, saying that he didn't look like what they thought he looked like. Everyone shut the fuck up. He looked great. Um, no. Listen, like you said, everyone on that team wants to win, and I mean you can just see it. But there's got to be a time and a place where. You know, they've got to win, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I know Ra I know Rab's out there. He's got the green colors in the background. Big fan over there. Um, That's what I'm saying. It's like when people, when Optic don't win and people talk about it, people are like, ah, oh, you know, why are you criticizing Optic when they got second and like Toronto got fourth? But it's like Toronto won the last event. New York Subliners won champs last year. FaZe won this event. So it's just natural that people are going to talk about Optic when they don't win. Um, but I, d I still feel like, I mean, look, what I said holds true, that this is the best Optic team they've formed since the Dynasty in multiple dimensions. Still the most confident that I'd be if I was an Optic fan in terms of actually getting over the line this year. I think their accountability is good. I still have my concerns, obviously, but natural with a team like this. But, you know, what Pred says at the end, that he's just basically, okay, the clip kind of cut off, but saying that he was frustrated that he didn't play as well against FaZe as he did the rest of the tournament. Um, 
is valid, to be fair, because he didn't play as well, and that's kind of what's annoying him, but he doesn't feel like it was once in comms or something to that effect. I'll put the mic closer if it's getting out. I'm a, I'm, I'm a, I guess I'm a fan of the clip. Um, I, I, I think he's just joke. I think he's like, he laughed at the community response of just everyone making it look like he's like bowing down to Ken. But at the same time, I do feel like the respect is there. It is a team of people that just want to win. Um, and then we do have a secondary clip here of Pred explaining why he stared down FaZe and said fucking bitch to them. So let's just 20 seconds, quick clip. We can watch that one as well and kind of, you know, put together the, the whole thought here about uh, him addressing all the optic co controversy content and, and talk recently. Yeah, the reason I even said that, like the bitch thing is because during that map, one of them went into game chat, like running them. Like during a map, during the round, like I think one of them clutched or some shit and they were talking shit during the map. I don't know. I, I, who the fuck talks in game chat? I land, you know what I'm saying? I like, fucking guys, fucking. Bitch. I went up to them after we fucking won the map. I was like, you fucking. Bitch. <laughs> I find that so funny. They want to troll. Like, if they want to troll, I'll troll back. Is that the reason I even said that? That's, that's fair. I, I, I think that's fair. I think it's, he took it a little bit aggressively, but. In comparison, I guess they're trolling, so he's just like he feeling Sounds himself. Like three. Sounds like to me. A little bit. Adrenaline's high though. He's just walking off. Yeah, that's right. Like, aha, got your ass. Yeah, you talking shit? I got your ass, fucking bitch. And just like kept the, kept the moving, which I think is acceptable. That's that's a that's a fair that's a that's a W fair way to go about it in my mind. I'm down for anything like this, but it's also like you know what um, Nature said back in the day: if you're gonna talk shit. Don't talk shit if you're not going to win the map, which is kind of equivalent. Like, like you're going to talk trash, still get slammed in the finals. People are going to clown you. That's life. But um, I mean, I want to see him say "fucking bitch" and choke slam him. You know, let's get some, exactly, let's get some yeah, let's like some WrestleMania it. type shit. Yeah, yeah. We should have got some WrestleMania yeah. type of right there. He's just fucking bitch. Lights go out. Ding. Undertaker pops up behind him. Choke slam. And the lights go off it's again, and then he's bitch. gone. Yeah. Sells right at monster says, energy uh, can like sh I fucking bitch night. right swing sells glasses Slam. go flying into the stage like it's <laughs> fuck crazy. <laughs> we need the Undertaker shit to pop on. But speaking of talking shit, speaking of drama, speaking of wanting the choke slam, let's get Austin Little go in the call here. Let's get him in the call real quick. Let me see. Let me add. I have to also fix the cams in a second here, but we will we will figure this out right now. Let me get him in. Here it is. Bang! People, people are my people are my sweater today, Rab. They ain't, they ain't fucking with my 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 no, mojo. I your sweater. It's nice. There he's okay. yeah. He's in. What the girls say too. <laughs> there we go. Let me fix the cams as this is this. Good Austin. What's good, gentlemen? Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah. We can hear you. We can hear, we can hear you. you. Are you gonna turn on camera now? Uh, I can set one up if you want me to. No, if you if you don't want to, it's fine. I just have to adjust a little bit. If you're not gonna set up cams, fine. I'll just move everyone. All good. It's all good. I okay. think. Okay, bet. Let me get Trey back in the frame here. Two seconds. Uh, just get a Willasho in the chat. Yeah, yeah, get, get some love, man. Look at him just Flash is coming in last minute. Taking time of his day to come talk to us a little bit here. If just... it ain't one of my favorite people on the planet, how you doing, <laughs> Doing all right. How you doing? Uh, you know, I get clickbaited all the time. A couple of death threats here and there. Um, oh, Jesus. You know. Sounds Life's like great, another day. honestly. Yeah, honestly, another day. I'd be in the cod, <laughs> being in the cod scene. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I right. just hit the gym, so I'm feeling pretty good. Back in Cali, Scarlet. out of that cold ass weather. Thank oh. God. Oh, <laughs> yeah, God's that. country. Love that. Okay, well, the the main cams are all messed up too, but it's all good. Let, let, let me. We got a slasher here. Uh, was you know, you're back home now. You're out of Boston, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I got back a few days ago. What's what's going through your mind, man? We'll talk to us a little bit here. What's going through your mind? Uh, leaving Boston, coming home. What's going through your head? Nothing really. I mean, I'm kind of just chilling, um, waiting to see what happens with all these teams. Uh, obviously, I told you I'd come on eventually too. I was kind of saving it. I, I was, you know, at, as soon as it happened, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna go on and fucking blast everything. And then I calmed down for a few days, and I was like, is that really gonna accomplish anything? I don't know. I was like, but maybe. And then as I'm sitting here, I was like, let me just wait. I'll just do it like at the end of the season. I'll come out and say like what I want to say. And honestly, the stuff that's been going on lately has kind of rubbed me the wrong way. I don't like this like whole Doug coming out saying a bunch of shit. 
Um, basically, like, he was calling either me or Ace him a rat, too, which is honestly pissing me off. And then saying how he wants all this transparency within the org. So I was like, okay, well, I guess you forced my hand, buddy. <laughs> so I'll, I'll say a little bit. We can do transparency. Yeah, yeah I'll, say, I'll, yeah, no, I'll say a little bit then. We're very transparent over here, Austin. We think Rambo is shit. Um... <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking nah, comedy. T- 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 take it away. Yeah, go ahead, brother. Floor is yours. Well, I mean, do you guys have any questions? Let's, let's go there. We'll ask Rab, me a question. Rab, you got some questions? You I have, have I have some questions. I have some questions. I'm not going to come out and say everything, but I will talk about some things. Chat, go ahead. You can put some questions as well. we'll we're going to ask the questions first, but chat, if you have any questions, go ahead. All right, I got a question. All right. Okay. The rumors, the rumors, rumors are that it became a, like, standoff potentially between, I guess, a set of coaches and players versus another set of players and coaches. What's, mm-hmm. Is there truth to that rumor? See, this is another thing I didn't like with what Doug said is he basically came out and said, well, he's talking about keeping everything in, in-house, right? But then he came out and said, oh, well, it turned into a slasher versus Snoopy thing, which from the outside looking in, that's a good guess. However, on the inside, that's not the case. It was me versus Snoopy, but there was a lot of other people who also were of the same train of thought as me. We all, basically everyone on the team was thinking the same way I was, that he needed, needed more time. Um, it wasn't going to work with this, this roster and stuff like that. And I just don't like the way he's painted the narrative that I basically took a stand on my own, which was just not the case. And I don't think the rumor of a set of coaches and like, um, I think it was just, Literally, almost everyone was aligned with what I was thinking. And honestly, from the beginning of the season, that was the way the team was built. It was kind of like, we're going to bring in some veteran, try to help us get a good team culture, like play the game the right way, because I never had that. And uh, I guess they said, fuck that. We're going back to the old way. But yeah, I don't think that rumor is necessarily true. I'm pretty sure, for the most part, besides the higher, higher ups, Everyone agreed with what I was saying, unless they're lying to my face. Higher, higher Is it just ups. Like, uh, wait, wait, I have one more uh, thing. Higher, higher ups, meaning no. like beyond. Uh... Beyond the coaches and players. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry, go ahead, Drew. Are you saying it's like one of those situations, uh, Austin, where like, you know, you see, I want to say like you started it because you know, obviously you know what it's like to win and what, and you know what you need to win. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I definitely so, started it. Yeah, sure. so like you started it. And then you were like, once you say it, everyone's like, you know what, Austin's right. But then it turns out that you, because you started it, you're the one that gets fucked over by it. Kinda. Also, yeah. Asim got fucked over. I mean, he was also agreeing with what I was saying. I mean, I probably said it a little bit more. I was more upfront about it because that's just yeah. how I am. I'm going to try to push the team to win. Um, I'm gonna say what people don't want to say. Like that's just the way it goes. And like I said, from my point of view, everyone is pretty much aligned. And there were some things that happened on the day to day in practice that just made it so obvious. And honestly, I'm gonna come out and say one because this is the one that just fucking blew my mind. And it it just doesn't make sense to me. So it was like mid February. Like, we've been playing on the patch for months, and I learned that we didn't know where the spawns were on any map. Not one map. Yes. We did not know the hard point spawns. How did, how did you... How did Because we're talking about... We, you mean. How did not, you okay, you can, I'm sure you can figure it out. <laughs> we're, talking, we're talking about a map, and someone's like, yo, I thought they were going to spawn tunnel here. And I'm like... Wait a second. I took like a I took like a second. I was like, wait, that's not even a spawn on this hill. Like that's what I'm thinking to myself. And I'm like, okay, wait, hold on. Where are the spawns on this hill? We go through it. Wrong. I'm like, okay, let's go through a different hill. Wrong. Wrong. Every map. So like, again, I don't understand how this like th- this doesn't make any sense to me. So why like, they cheating this guy did, out of you? Did, did, also, Buster. this is another reason. Did this come out while we were still on the team? No. So how how is Doug coming out and saying me or Ace are rats? This did not come out. I could have easily went and told people this because it was the most mind blowing shit I've ever been a part of. 
But did it come out? No. Now we're not on the team. I don't give a fuck anymore. I can say whatever I want. I mean, this happened with a similar situation where you told me something that happened in Vanguard, Austin, like two majors prior to it happening. So, like, Wait. you told me something that, um, like, uh, someone forgetting S and D play calls, but like, it happened at a major beforehand. Uh, so, I'm like backing up your like your your statement of like, if you wanted to say something and get it out there, it would have yeah. been out there. And let me address Doug in the chat again. Why Zoom is saying shit about our team on the flank? If you watch the VOD, you can see him rotating to the wrong hill multiple times in matches. I don't have to go tell Zuma that. He can uh, just watch the minimap and be like, why is he at P5 when P4 is active? Uh, Doug, I don't uh, know. It's a good fucking uh, uh, question. Doug, I'm going to say... Doug, I'm going to say as well, I said it on this show before even. I've been Snoopy Hater at number one. Don't hate me for that. But I saw on Rio, he rotates to the wrong hill, and I pointed that out on the map and then brought it on this show myself before Zuma did with no insider exactly. knowledge or exactly. anything. Exactly. And you this, don't tell this, nobody that. And this is my point as well, is that like, if if this stuff gets out, it gets out quick. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what I'm this saying, would, bro. This would this would already have been on. If you said anything or Asim said anything or anything like that, it would have already been said on Zuma stream in February. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you know like, how quick then us not knowing spawns would have got out as a professional oh. Call of Duty team. Us not knowing <laughs> the fucking spawns that we're screaming every day. Like, come on, bro. Yeah, we no, that be sure that, that, yeah, that would have went like wildfire. Yeah, 100%. so they, that shit just rubbed me the wrong way, bro. I don't like the way he's going about that. And, like, I've honestly been really good friends with Doug. I've had a lot of respect for Doug over the years. But he apparently he's not even talking about me. He's talking about Asim. But that still just rubs me the wrong way. Because it's like, bro, Asim wasn't saying shit that got out. That wasn't public knowledge besides the, oh, he's rotating the wrong hills. Well, just watch the minimap. I don't need to tell Zuma that for him to go say it on the flank. Ain't nobody telling him that. He just went and watched the map. Yeah, I mean, if you watch COD, you understand is, that. <laughs> okay, Doug, what, what, did we, what did we say? Give me one thing we said that, that, that went out on the flank that couldn't be, or that had to be from us. Like, want to join the call? Yeah, yeah join I, the call, Doug. D Doug, if you wanna, yeah. Doug, if you want to join the call, please uh, send me, DM me your uh, Discord, and we'll add you in as well. Uh, but I had a separate question, I guess, addressing the leaks, or addressing what we consider leaks. Um, was day to day, day to day in the Boston camp like, was it uh, chaotic? Was it was were people like kind of by the end of this when as close to when you getting dropped or you and Asim getting dropped right? And then B Sport Josh also getting axed as well. Was kind of the, were the vibes dead? Was it did it feel like it was coming or like did it catch you off guard? Uh, it felt like a change was coming. The way the change went about definitely caught me off guard. Because, like I said, everyone was pretty aligned with what should be done. What so, is this like? Who calls the shots here? Because it must be the people above the coaches and players. That's this my like, only guess. Unless, yeah, like yeah, I said, unless everyone is got... lying to my face, which I find that hard to believe when it's a one on one conversation. Like, there's no reason to lie. Also, there's, I have written stuff. So it's like, the, it doesn't make any sense. You think Beast Ball also got screwed over here? Because our feeling was that, like, well, if Dan got the got... ball, yeah. then, you know, someone had to be the full guy, right? I think so, personally. Well, that, but... well, that, was my, well, that was my point of, you know, the changes that were made made no sense to me in terms of gameplay-wise. And then Beast Sport going made no sense to me because, like, what the fuck's he done wrong? I think Josh gets, <laughs> just got scapegoated realistically. You know what I'm saying? No, like when I said, like, oh, when it comes down to changes and stuff like that, you have to look at the players and you look at the coaches. And I didn't mean like B Sport, like, you know, yeah. Unfortunately, it was just him that goes. And then obviously, with you going and Asim going, like, gameplay wise, like, Asim was probably like the best player. Is that, in terms is coming of... on or what? Uh, he I didn't reply. Ever since. He didn't reply. Play I'm, shit. I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking for my DMs right Interesting. now. If I got anything. Um, so he's not, he's not standing on business like he said he was doing the oh, other day. He said he, he so, said he said he's chilling. He said he's chilling. Oh, okay. Oh, good. Interesting. But my okay. point is, my point is, Austin, is that I feel like you and Asim probably see eye to eye on many things, like you know, especially in that team when you oh, guys we definitely did the for sure. Yeah. I mean, I honestly feel bad because. I was a big reason why we brought Asim in in the first place. And 
I mean, honestly, I didn't even agree with just dropping Cap personally. But whatever, that's beside the point. I wanted He's to bring Ace in. He had so many offers. He comes to our team and he plays probably the best at the LAN event and gets hoed. So I honestly feel bad for that. And then that's the reason why I'm honestly kind of coming out and talking to now is because like, bro, the, like he's being called a rat. These narratives being thrown around. Like, honestly, it's fucking unacceptable. Like the type of shit that's being said. Okay. I'm going to devil's advocate like I always do because I have to. At the same time, do you think that there should have been some more awareness from his friends that if they said anything about this camp that some basically it would have came back for people to think it was asim you get what i'm trying to say oh for sure i mean if i mean it makes sense like if zoom is going to say something on stream that's insider info like you would think it would be coming from asim but what I'm, I'm still confused what did he say that wasn't public like like obvious that you could watch from the outside looking in and guess that's what's going on you know what i mean well, I think that's I think I, I think that's the point that everyone's trying to make is it's like you can see it, but but if Tommy says it, they're like, oh, Asim's told him this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. But what did he say? Like, what did Tommy say? I I, could, I couldn't tell you honestly. That's what I I'm would, saying. I'm have... confused. What? Where this like? Did You're I miss something? These strats, I think, was the main thing. But also, I didn't ever thought there was an issue with Asim saying anything. I think a lot of the discussion was like whether Zoom should have talked about it publicly. Also, also, were these thing. things coming out while we were still on the team or after we had No, you already gone at this point. This so, like, what are we talking about? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. I can't say anything after I'm not on the no, team or under the contract payroll, or anything? You know. The but point this was, is, like, this the is, narrative uh, it paints on Snoopy, and this is what Doug's getting at. The question I have with Doug as well is, like, does that... <laughs> Doug, understandably, is very close with Snoopy after... Very high him after their relationship, I guess, they had in Chandler's. And um, this can't wait before change is interesting. I'm not sure this, this clip did this specific one I'm talking about. But I don't know, is, is Doug working with Dens now? Like, Doug, I don't know, he wasn't, the, there, but... wasn't a part of the team when I was there, but he said he was watching our scrims, so I don't know how. Interesting, like all of a sudden we're talking about Boston stuff and Doug pops up in the chat, but he's not. Yeah, no, that, that's that's another end. curiosity and question I had for you as well. What was, when you were playing, was Doug, did Doug have like a role on the team? Did you see Doug every day? Bro, I talked to Doug one time at Boston when he was retiring. Basically, I gave him a hug, like, Bro, like, you know what I mean? Talk to him for a little bit about retiring, could, yeah, about yeah. the pull-up record. Like, because I, I, I'm good friends with Doug. I won my first tournament with Doug. Like, Listen, I go Doug's in Tommy stream. Doug's in Tommy stream being the Boston GM. That's, yeah, that's what I was very that's, confused about. That's what I'm confused about, too, bro. <laughs> I'm just as confused. I don't know where all this is coming from. Okay. So you're in as much confusion as we are when we see him that, for 20 yes, minutes I defending. Am. And that's why I said I, this kind of forced my hand because right? I'm seeing all this shit being talked about. And I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I might as well talk to myself. Like, we want to have transparency? Let's have some fucking transparency. Let's say actually what was happening. I mean, you have no reason to lie either. Like, <laughs> you don't I have no reason. It. That's true. You have no reason to lie because you don't gain anything from it. That's no. why I said to you, like, that's why I said to you, like, like you could wait to the end of the season, but like, like even Asim, for example, like everyone just going around slaughtering his name too. Yeah. Like if Asim was just like came out, bro, Asim and you have probably so much shit to say. Oh yeah, I'm not gonna say everything. Uh, we have, I just told we you that one story. I feel like is plenty. Doug not knowing spawns. Doug said he would have appreciated if Asim texted him before joining Breach. Yeah, That's Doug actually put that in our chat as well. If you scroll up a little bit in the chat, Doug said that like... Uh, Asim has to ago, text yeah. Doug when he joins Breach? I got a screenshot, actually, hang on. What? Yeah, I don't, I don't really <laughs> get this either. I wonder if Doug can clarify. That was the screenshot from like three minutes ago in our chat. He said... So, so, uh, yeah, I think Doug's going to join this too. Bro, what are we saying? <laughs> yeah, all right. Yes, uh, Doug, d Doug uh, DM me. Uh, he said, "All I must say, uh, all I must say, is Penta got shafted potentially five times as our CDL sub, and I'd love for Asim to text me before joining Breach." I mean, but but like Doug ate, ate the GM on a coach, right? So like, you know what I mean? If Doug ate the GM, yeah, like, coach, that's what I'm saying. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> but that, but that, but that's what I'm saying as well. Is as like the way Doug's talking about you is like, you guys were fucking there every day. Like, no. I talked to Doug one time on my whole tenure of Boston Breach, and it was when he retired in person at the Boston event. Wait, my, Doug might be the CEO, the CFO, the CMO, the CTO. Doug might be the, Doug might, yeah, the higher, Doug might be the higher, higher ups you're on about. 
Wait, don't let me play for me. the team next stage on, on this evidence. Yeah, that's what he's done. He's forced you out, Austin. He's on he's on the AR. He's taking the AR, yeah. Shit. Him, him being Snoopy and Penta, I don't know. Damn. The fucking master plan. I, honestly, at that point, I got to tip my hat. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, no, speaking of that, because you said about... um, And bear in mind, like, Austin, I feel like me and you, you know, um, align on a lot of things when it comes down to team changes and stuff like that. Yeah. With your team... Uh, when you said you didn't agree with just dropping cap, you meant a two-man change is what I said too. Yep, um, yep, yep, yep. Because I think we, I think we can, most of us can agree that when the team's doing as bad as you guys were at that time, a one-man change doesn't really fix anything. It doesn't do anything, and honestly, that's yeah. why. Again, I'll say the whole Preston running a sub thing was a possibility because Preston obviously wanted to keep playing with me. And he said, oh, fuck it, I'll run a sub. And I was like, in my head, I was like, that kind of makes sense because it's almost like a two-person change. Yeah. I was like, I'm okay. kind of down to do that. So, like, yeah, let's see what happens. And I thought, well, I mean, I, I was told I was on the team for a second. And then a few days later, it changed again. So, Well, yeah, that's, I, that's, that's what I said in terms of your team. If you don't want to make a two-man change, at least let Asim run an AR uh, and change Preston to a yeah. sub. I think that, I think that would have worked well. Because obviously, I feel like Asim probably is a better AR oh, on this game. Perfect. Get Doug in here. Let's go. Okay. Welcome yeah. in, Douglas. Yo, guys. Good afternoon. Okay. Going. We'll take right. the cams. Go ahead, guys. Go ahead. It was all cap. Let me hear it. Needs clarity, bro. Like I, I, I'm look. I'm just like you, Austin. I hate lack of transparency. I can't stand lack. Let's of get transparent then. So let's let's go from the beginning. Pentagram has been our CDL substitute since the beginning of this game. Pentagram has been shafted by this organization four different times. This organization got dead last four times. Pentagram was not going to get an opportunity again. At that point, I said, this is absolutely unacceptable. No, because if Priest is going to move to a sub, that means Pentagram's getting shafted for a fifth time. And this guy's been in this org since last year. We're trying to build a foundation in this organization. And there's a massive conflict of interest, not just with players, coaches, GMs, the org, everything like the conflict of interest needs to be unified. So at this point, obviously big changes are happening and there's coaching changes, there's roster changes, there's player changes, and there's a lot of shit that's going down. And unfortunately people got to get cut. That's just the way it is. And it sucks, but that's just how it has to be. So bottom line, man, when I'm seeing Pentagram for the fifth time getting shafted, I have to say something because this guy deserves an opportunity in the CDL. Well, okay. With Asim as well, let me just clarify with Asim as well. I understand he had league offers because Zuma was defending him to his grave to me and I was talking to him privately about this. I'm like, bro, look, if Asim had an offer to go to Boston Breach and two other teams that was there as well, I would have loved to say, yo, listen, Pentagram's been on our bench for a long, long time and he's not getting any opportunity on this team. So I don't understand what the hell is going on, but we need to unify and come together as a team. So all these changes that are happening, it sucks that you guys had to get the short end of the stick, but that's just the reality of the situation, plain and simple. Oh, wait, you said what I was saying was cap, and then you just came in here talking about Pentagram. What? Am I confused? Is anyone else confused? We want to build around Eric, Snoopy. You guys don't get clearly. along. It's just that clear. It's clearly that wait, simple. You and well, Snoopy don't get along. No, 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 no. Like wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's be transparent now. Not me and Snoopy. Me, Ace, and Priesta, and the coaching staff all agreed with what I was saying. So let's just be transparent, Doug. So how, Slasher, how do those conversations start and go from just it's everyone against Snoopy when we want to build around Snoopy when the season starts? How does that happen? Because when someone doesn't know the spawns in Hardpoint months into the game, it's clear as day. We ain't ready, brother. Well, I mean, I wanted Snoopy to stay in Academy last year going into this year too, but he got called up to the league. So at the end of the day, Snoopy's on the team. We're trying to build around Eric. We're trying to make him comfortable. We're trying to make this team the best it can be. Obviously, if he's not going to perform up to standard, it's only been four months of this guy in the league. He, he played on a Latin American only team. Only four months. He was, he was talking in full Spanish for literally four months of playing Respawn before he got called up to champs versus Optic, and then he's starting to learn English and speak in English. Like, the yeah, kid doesn't have time uh, to develop. Listen, 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 Doug. Again, I don't want to just come on here and slander Eric. I actually think Eric's a good kid. I don't want to just turn this into me slandering Eric. That's not what I'm trying to do here. I'm just trying to be transparent because that's what you wanted to do. But like, bro, what are we even talking about? It's only been four months in the fucking professional league. Bro, you have to earn your time in the professional league. And that goes for every player. 
Like, people would just, oh, I, I got to get a chance here. I got to get a chance there. Bro, if you have a chance, you have to earn that time. You haven't earned the time. You don't deserve it anymore. Like, what are we talking about? Like, bro, like, oh, it's only been, like, let's, let's give him two years. Let's give him, the, bro, what? Earn your fucking time, bro. Put in the work. Bro, when I was a player coming up, there was no, oh, I, let me get a chance. I almost won an event with an AM team, and then I got picked up. What are we talking about, bro? So when, when does Pentagram you. get a shot by that logic? If he's not, been but, 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 uh, again, the I don't, I don't want to talk about Pentagram, but like, bro, he's not getting a shot. Do people on the team all want to play with him? Because if they did, they'd probably get a shot. Yeah, but who cares? That's not what happened. Who cares? It's over. Bro, like, but dude, you're saying that he was getting shafted for five times. Is he truly getting shafted? If Priesta was to move to a sub and then Pentagram is going to get shafted again, then yes, he's getting shafted because the players want to go do this. The coaches yeah, want to go do this. Right? How is that getting shafted? Hasn't all, the other again. Hasn't all the other players been shafted though? Because Snoopy's not wrote like obviously you're saying Snoopy's respectfully new, Snoopy, new Snoopy's dog shit. Okay, this is the th problem. He's not up to standard with Call of Duty with with subs right now. I've been a number one. Okay, I'll be honest with you, Doug. I'm transparent as well. Respectfully, you're dog shit. Who the fuck are you? I, it's my opinion too. Who, we all have opinions out here. You know okay, what I mean? it's but, like, my, but what the fuck are we saying, guys? Come on. He like, wrote it. Be no, more Doug, 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 hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out all the way. Hear me out. I'm trying to troll a little bit. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. That's why I'm not like. I wonder if you've been trolling this whole time. I'm not. Now I'm starting to. Now I'm starting to understand. Listen, listen. Let me let me finish my point real quick. All right. All right. Go ahead. With four months, with four months in professional league. All right. You are dead last. All right, three players want to get rid of one player, yeah? Yet yeah. two other players that are playing better than that said one player have been dropped because you want to, you know, this guy is the franchise player, whatever like that. Makes Doug, sense to in, me. Doug, we're four months into the league. You guys are dead last in the league, looking like you're not making champs, and you want to keep the one player that three players wanted to drop. Make that make sense to me now. It's only I can't make months. it make sense to you now because we just made the change and they've been screaming for one week, but let the season develop and see what happens and we'll see the results as they come. I could also make an argument with you that if Snoopy is this bad of a player and they get dead last twice, but make a sub play, like if we bring in, a and look, I have nothing bad to say about Asim, but if we're going to bring Asim into the team for Capsidal and the result is still the same and Asim's such a great player, wouldn't we still get better than dead last? You're telling no, me that this because, one player listen, is holding the because, team back that much? No, because bro, when you're playing that bad as a team, you need a two-man change, but you Correct. guys are struggling. Correct, so I made a two-man change. No, you didn't. No, you did. now we you dropped Asim and Slasher and we brought in Beans yeah, and Pentagram. But you're not, yeah, but you're not, yeah, you did. Yeah, now you did. <laughs> yeah, but so, you guys are so reluctant on making the I, right change. I don't look change. like that no more, bro. Take that off the screen. I don't look like that. <laughs> you, guys, you, guys, you guys are so reluctant to make the right change instead of just listen. What you oh, what's the right done change? Was, right? Isn't that your opinion? What the right change is? Because the whole team thinks this that's is the true. right it's change. That's the best. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, it is my opinion. But my opinion is the same as the other three players that have played with a said player. Like you said, you want Snoopy to. Wait, hold on. You didn't. Wait, cool. actually, I got a oh, question yeah. now. Okay, go ahead. Doug, you said you've been watching our scrims. Is that true? Yes or no? You really want me to talk about these scrims on this podcast right here, right now? So I'm just actually, asking. I'm you just want asking, me to bring you up been... your scrims, your scrims with your team on this podcast? I'm just right asking. Now. Had you? Been you don't want to go there. there. You do not want to go there, Austin. We are not going there. Trust me. You, you just we can't do not say want yes to or go no. There. I've heard the scrims. I've listened to a lot of those scrims. Oh, so you did watch a lot of them? I did. Oh yes. Mm, okay. And if for you sure. want to pinpoint small little things, I could go tit for tap for you all day long on that, Austin. We do not want to go there right now. Pinpoint small little things. What are you talking about? Exactly. We shouldn't go there. Doug, there's listen, buddy. I don't know what you're saying right now, but for sure, go there. I, my, no, me, we should not. My question, my question is one simple. It's a kind of something though. It's simple. Doug, yeah, you're you. I don't know what your involvement is exactly with Breach. I don't know if it's ownership. I don't know exactly what it is, but it seems like it's it's oh it's overstepping a certain bounds because the players are saying this is what we should do, but then you come in and now it seems like your influence pushed Pentagram onto this team. Forced Austin, who, in my opinion, respectful to Beans, is a much better player than Beans. And then you forced out Asim, who played pretty well at LAN. And then you kept two players who generally don't seem like the right fit with the other two players you brought in. It seems like you're, you're GMing secretly behind the scenes. And now you're talking about you have intel on scrims. You weren't scrimming with them. So doesn't that mean someone was leaking to you as well? I've been a part of this organization before anyone in this organization that's been here has been a part of Wait the organization, second. first of all. No, I so, understand that. No, it's not about leaking. As an organization, when I'm seeing 
one player getting singled out on one major talk show and I'm hearing leaks coming out to this guy. Regardless of these leaks too, it doesn't change the thing that happened, but when everyone is targeting one player and there's things privately about this one player getting put out publicly, and this is a player that I wanted to develop personally myself in the academy team going into this season. I wanted to develop this player going into the season, but he's on the main roster now. So, so when I'm seeing everyone bully a 19-year-old kid who has played competitive COD for less than one year, decisions have to be made. Either we have to make a decision to move on from Snoopy, or we have to make a decision to move on from Slasher and Co. But, so it's oh, a tough decision, you, you, but it's a decision that was made. You but, sat, there, sat there saying you want to develop him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Saying, yeah, yeah you, say you, you say you want to sit there and develop him, yet you're four months into the season with him on a pro team. And I'm not saying it's all his fault. It's a team game. It's four people running around together. It's definitely a team game, yeah. Yeah, three people on the team decide that he's not the right fit for the team. So what do you do? All right, you make a change, you bring Asim in. Yes, Asim's not going to turn you guys into a top four team, top six team. That's just not what he does. What you guys needed to do was make a two-man change, which you've done now. But what I'm saying is, is that if everyone's in agreement that he's not ready, like Slasher said, like you said, and he's still on the team, like surely that says a lot more about the organization wants to just keep Snoopy as their franchise player, correct. But instead of actually like letting him mature in challenges and letting him have that, you know, letting him become that player, instead you've thrown him into the league. The players that have played with him obviously aren't happy with that. He's rotating to the wrong hills and you're dead last. So what like I don't understand what the achievement of Boston Breach is this season, to be honest with you. Also, wait, also, can you can you go on that tangent a little bit, Doug? You said everyone was bullying him. Could you? I'll, I'll grant you that maybe I was bullying him. Who else was bullying him, though? I'm talking about the community because of private leaks. Because of Zuma leak? private leak? and the flank. Him rotating to the wrong hill, that's public knowledge, and you can no, see... No, him forgetting a what? play call in Search and Destroy. That Fair came point. out after From we Zoom, had no, been that came out, No, that came out before. That came Wait, out before, when did it come Austin? out? Can you give me a I link? I don't know the specific day, but you want to be tit for tat with me, and I'm just trying to tell you how it really is, Austin. I'm trying to be completely transparent with you right now. At the end of the day, I love you, and I love playing with you. And if I play with you, I know we can win together, but I'm not a player anymore, and I just retired. I didn't have any say in anything that was happening prior to after I retired. Now, moving forward, we are going to be unified as a team. I agree. I wanted Snoopy to stay in Challengers. I didn't want him to get a call up to the league last year, but he did. Like, it's not my decision. But now, moving forward, things are changing, and we're trying to be unified as a front. Okay. Okay, but you're not, you yeah, haven't yeah, answered I, my he, question. He, he, he what was your question again, Trey? Because Austin just cut you my, off. My, my, my question is, what, like, what's the plan? Okay, that's... I had, really? Okay, go ahead. My, I was going to say, like, what, like what, what's, the, what's the Boston Breach plan? Because right now, like I said, you had three players that didn't want to play with one player. Now you've just made a two-man change. And everyone's saying Snoopy needs to develop this, Snoopy needs to develop that. You've even got you you're, saying You're Snoopy admitting needs it to as well, yes. Yeah, you're admitting that Snoopy still needs to develop four months into a professional season. What's the plan? Are you just going to ride out the whole season hoping you guys make champs? Obviously, like, you know, you picked up Ben Beans, who I think is an amazing player. You've picked up, you know... Pentagram, who's deserved the chance for three years, everything like that. I'm not slating these players. I'm just saying, you're literally sat here saying Snoopy needs to develop as a player. Austin saying it. Obviously, Asim's agreed of Austin. Priester obviously agreed of Austin too because that's what had happened. And like, it just seems to me like developing a player when you guys say you need to develop him in a professional league when you're dead last as Boston Breach, who want to be competing with the top teams, they provide everything like that. Like, I don't know. I don't know like, what the plan is at that point. The, the plan is pretty clear and obvious to me. We want to be unified on all fronts, top to bottom, through coaching staff, players, general managers, content, everything. Everything has to be 100% unified moving forward because there's been a lot of lack of communication and a lack of unification throughout the years. It's just that simple. So moving forward, a lot of changes obviously happen. And yes, I, I everyone who has... dude. Josh, I've always loved Josh personally. Um, Slasher, Austin, you know how I feel about you, man. I always loved you too. Asim, I got nothing but good things to say about Asim. I don't really know him, but ultimately tough decisions were made. It's just that simple. So moving forward, Boston Breach is going to be ran a certain way. And if this continues to happen, we will evaluate. But unfortunately, when you get dead last four events in a row and you have a guy on the bench that's signed as a substitute who's not getting a shot, 
and he's still not going to get a shot, that's when a tipping point is going to happen. There's going to be a breaking point for changes. Okay. And my question was never answered as well is that what, how is a team supposed to function properly when there's a, sh a shadow GM coordinating behind the scenes, pulling strings, keeping a player who no one wants to play with on, and then pulling a guy who he played with onto the main roster when in comparison to other players out there, talent-wise, you, you could say, you, I, I know the argument, I'm not digging anyone, but talent-wise, on, available, you could have, you know, Hixie, for example, I'm just putting out names out there. Why, how does it work when there's a shadow GM who's not part of the org officially? How does it work when you're a, a coach or the actual GM when you're there pulling the strings? How is that supposed to function? Oh, I don't, have, I don't have an official title at Boston Breach because I just retired. So to call me a shadow GM is a little bit far-fetched, I would say. But yeah, I mean, moving forward with Boston Breach, I'm absolutely going to make sure that this organization is doing everything possible to win on all fronts, I, plain I, and simple. I, I whether, whether I'm a content creator, listen, whether I'm a content creator, whether I'm an assistant coach, whether I'm a janitor in the back end, whether if I'm the owner, whether I'm the CEO, it doesn't matter what my title is on Boston Breach. Excuse me, doing it all. That's good. No, I just want to make sure that this organization is unified and winning on all fronts, no, no, plain and simple. Hold on one second. I gave my food, guys. One sec. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Look, uh, look. I was going to say, clearly they're not unified, though, because unified would mean everyone's in agreement that they want to drop one player, then. <laughs> they just get point, everyone. Trey. Unified means you all want to work together. I, had to, I had to look up the definition of that word. I was thinking about different words. Yeah. Like, unless, unless, uh, unless they had to drop you and Asim to be unified, yeah? Like, I feel like you all were, you know, <laughs> in agreement. You were unified as you three as... Wait, wait, Asian. come on, wait. Everyone, everyone's missing. Everyone's just talking about the wrong point here. The unified, unified, all that. Everyone's talking about the wrong point here. Did we hear what he just said? He, yeah, he didn't answer your question he, at all. He didn't answer. No, no, beyond that. But he already said, everyone that didn't, didn't want Snoopy, I kept it, I, I wanted to develop him out and keep him here. Secondly, he said, Pentagram deserves a shot. So who do you think was saying correct. To, yes, correct. to get him yes. in? I'm, that, so you are correct. shadow yes. GMing. So how is the team supposed to function properly when none of their word matters? It matters a guy who's not even No, I'm not I'm not a shadow GM. That's not that's not how the that's not how the organization so, so has who, ever ran. Who it's thought, not a who shadow thought Pentagram GM. was ready for the main main roster at this moment? Who who decided that? Everyone. Our me our coaching staff, our general manager, everyone, everyone thought except for Slasher, apparently. I oh, mean, dude, just I don't me. Know. Just me. Maybe, maybe Priesta too. I don't know, dude. Mm. At the end of the day, look. But how do you not know? All though? I know is this: our coaching staff, our general manager, myself, the coaches that are on the team now, the ownership, the president of the team, all felt the same way about these things. So I don't know where you feel this is where you feel about things, but moving forward. This is the way the organization wants to run things. We want to make sure that everyone is unified on all fronts, simply put. Because there's a lot of things that don't make any sense, Austin, and I agree. And that's why I'm coming on here right now talking about this, because I want everything to be unified. So why did, so why did Beastboard get dropped? Yeah. Was he not, was it, was he not, what, what, was he not, was he not in, in tune with the unifiance right, of the, yeah, of the Boston right, Bridge? Yeah. Look, <laughs> Trey, you're, what you're trying to do is cause more divide and I'm just trying to bring things together. I do. Trey, 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 stop, Trey, stop, Trey, stop, Trey, stop, Trey, stop. I'm asking a genuine fucking Trey, one second, one second, everyone calm down. Trey. I'm going to be president one day. No, no, everyone, everyone, everyone calm down, everyone calm down. I have a question, I have a question. Why was B-Sport Josh dropped? I don't know. I wasn't in the conversation, but we moved Shawnee up to a coach. Shawnee retired and he's a coach now. So Shawnee's going to be a coach with Zed. Den's is still our GM. And I'm just sitting here without a title. It's that simple. Wait, so, okay. So what, okay, so what it sounds like to me, it sounds like people got Constellation prizes for the Boston Breach Academy not existing anymore. That's what it sounds like. Pentagram got moved up. Shawnee, oh, uh, what do we do with Shawnee? Oh, he's going to be out of a job. Fuck it. Let's make him, head, let's make him coach too. In place of B Sport Josh, because he's how does anyone get a job in the first place, Stocksman? How do they all get jobs in the first place? How does B Sport Job get a has B Sport Josh get a job? How does Dens get a job? How does Zed get a job? How does Slash like dude? I'll how do all these people get my jobs? Shit. Don't say my name. Yeah, I earned my shit. It sounds like who but again, it sounds like constellations of we're removing Boston Bridge Academy. This guy's gonna be out of a job, so let's move let's take someone else's job for no set reason. And Are you him. on Boston Breach, Stocksman? Do you pay $27.5 million to have an organization in the league? Motherfucker, you just yes said no. you're not on Boston Breach right now. You don't have a title. How are you shadow GMing? That's the question <laughs> I'm trying to get to. What are you talking about? How do so these people answer like, my question? How are time. these people getting their spots over people who seem more qualified and have been with the team longer? How does that work? Give it some time. And then when I have an official title, I'll come back here and I'll say the exact same thing I'm saying with an official title, if that makes you happy. But at the end of the day, the moves don't change anything. The, the organization is going to be ran by the GM, 
the ownership, the coaches, people and having Doug. opinions, making a collective agreement on what is the best move for the organization moving forward. Okay, calm question. Calm, calm question. At what point, if you, when you, okay, if you do become GM, you do t hold the role of straight GM, whatever it may be. At what point do you, do you have to either accept? At what point do you find the Snoopy experiment to work? And at what point would you have to admit that it's a failure? What is, what would happen? Results, the results speak, man. Look, the results speak. When Snoopy came into the team, we got top six at champs and Snoopy played really well. We go into our land events and we get dead last back to back with roster changes. Snoopy still, even despite the fact that he's not reading a spawn or he's not doing this or he's not doing that, I could sit here and shit on Slasher all day long for him doing things in controls and ace him for this and, and uh, Priester for this. But dude, doing that isn't going to make the no, team you better in any do way. That. You don't know how to play the game yourself. Shut up, bro. Stop right, saying for start, bullshit. For, for, start, top top six, for start, top six of champs is not an achievement when eight teams go there. Don't even bother saying that. That is basically dead last. So that's not an achievement. Congratulations. You're just on some fucking PR tirade or something. Like, I don't know what the fuck you're doing. You, you say, oh, I'm helping. I don't have a title. Oh, but I'm helping. Oh, but I don't have a title. Like, bro, what the fuck are you even saying, bro? It's like, respectfully, oh, like, uh, just, yeah. like no, this, this is just all, like... Disrespectfully, just, Austin, disrespectfully. No, just say it with your chest out, bro. Like, you're talking... I've been like speaking with my chest. Bro. I've been saying it. You are... I'm Austin, let it go. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Come on, man. Like, dude, I don't want to go here with this shit, bro. No. I've been very blatantly, transparently honest with everything that is happening here. Plain and simple. If you don't like it, sorry. There's nothing I can do about it now, man. Like, I don't know what to tell you, dude. Let's let's move forward from here because again we're stuck on on a point here, Doug. I, I don't it's hostile in here a little bit towards you, and I don't mean it to be that way. Let's. What is your? I mean, don't obviously you can't say it, but what do you want, or where are you gonna be with Boston in the future? Do you plan to become the GM for the team? What is your role? Do you think you're gonna that you want you see yourself in for Boston Breach? Well, I think Dems does a really good job as a GM, and I don't really care to have the GM role in the team. I just want to see the team win and succeed. Simply put. I want to be in Boston Breach forever, for life. These guys have me at my rock bottom. These guys helped me at my rock bottom. And they helped me learn a lot about myself and helped me grow in a lot of different ways. And I'm loyal to this organization. We have a lot of loyalty to each other. We have a lot of the same vision for this future of how this franchise is going to be ran and the way we see this franchise growing. So we're going to do everything we can to make this franchise do the absolute best that it can. And at the end of the day, it means tough decisions will be made. And I'm sorry that Slasher had to be on the short end of it. But that's life. It happens, man. Like, I, I still, at the end of the day, have nothing but respect for Slasher as a player, respect for what we've done together as, as teammates 10 years ago. Like, it's just, it's, I'm sorry that this is how it has to go. I have no problem having these private conversations with people or public conversations with people. But this is just the way the organization is going to be ran moving forward. I'd like to have you, Esther, because you played with Beans, you played with, um, you know, all the guys that have now made their way back from the academy. In what way, sure, the team chemistry should be better if the guys that are currently there agree that Snoopy should stay on the team. I don't know what we think about Priester. That's been discussed. But um, yeah, why do we think that Beans and Penta were the right guys to... You might cut out the end there. Why were Beans and Penta what? The right guys to lead the team back to the top. There you go. Well, I think it was a collective decision between the entire organization. Um, Beans obviously was on our team last year. He had some success. He had some big plays and big moments. Pentagram has had a long track record in challengers, including winning a unanimous MVP in challengers for a season of just consistency at the highest level in challengers as a submachine gun player without getting an opportunity. And... The most important thing with teams that we're all ignoring here is how players bounce off of each other as opposed to the opinions of how they feel. When you play with players, sometimes you click and sometimes you don't, even if you're giving it 110%. You could be the best players in the game doing everything possible to win, but sometimes, and we all know this, and if anyone disagrees with this, please speak up, sometimes players just don't play well with each other, no matter how hard they try. It just doesn't seem to work out. So we had to make a giant change. I think Snoopy, Beans, Pentagram, and Priesta, having Snoopy and Pentagram on the stun machine guns, having Priesta as basically a Swiss army knife that, like Slasher said, he could run a sub, he could run an AR, he could do everything. And then having Beans coming in with his energy is a decision that this team collectively, this is not me being some master manipulator with these little memes I'm seeing, collectively 
This was an organization decision that was made. And look, we're in dead last. We're in dead last. So there's blame to be shifted to everybody on this team and organization. So the only thing we want to do is see the organization improve and go up. But collectively, as a team, everyone wanted to drop Snoopy. Collectively. Collectively, that did not happen, Trey. It didn't. Really? <laughs> that's, that's news to me. <laughs> I mean, I, listen, I just don't get where you drop your best player. That, to me, obviously, you know, you have faith, whatever like that, but you dropped your best player. Performing best player. Now, that, to me, is not good GM moves. That, to me, isn't good coach moves. That, to me, isn't good shadow GM moves. That, to me, is, you know, taking this risk again that, you know, didn't need to be taken. I'm glad you feel that way, Trey. I'm happy you have your opinion and, and you can and do what I'm, you want and, and, and I'm perfectly happy for you guys to absolutely fry. And, no, I, know, I got a question. I got back. a question. I got a question. I, none of this lollygag bullshit. I got a question. So you said now, Snoopy, you, you're part of the reason Snoopy stays on this team. Fine. No problem. I'm okay with that. Who you said, but you said in the beginning of the season, you, want, you're, you wanted to keep him with you and develop him out. So who made the decision that it was time for him to move up and overrided your shadow GM capabilities? Who did that? You're clip farming heavy right now, and we're not answering that question, dude. I, okay, I was making you were trolling earlier. Can I, I can't troll for a second. Okay, then you're, you're trying to clip farm. I'm not trying. I'm, bro, I'm getting look at the clips. Ace, I'm going to make this abundantly clear to you. When I was an active player playing in the academy roster, I was simply just an active player playing in the academy roster. I just retired in January. Yeah. That's all I'm going to tell you about that, plain and simple. My question was, who's, who wanted to bring him up to the main roster and not let you develop him out? I'll answer it again. You could figure, no, that, out. No you could figure that out on your own. Simply put, I was an active player at that time, and now I am not. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Again. Is there any other questions? Because my food's here. Nah, I you guess can go ahead one more quick one is, you... like, when the decision is made, the Slasher and Asim are gone, they're both dropped, right? It's not, um, it's not a bench situation. It's not like a... Did you just think it was... Did the team think internally it was untenable? The relationships that have been broken internally? I'm making noise. I would say it was at the point where a lot of moves had to change. And unfortunately, diff difficult decisions had to be made. Okay. Short and sweet. <laughs> well, if you guys want to... Thanks for coming on. Yeah, that's fair. Thanks for Aaron and Al. Yeah, no problem. All right. All right. Good. Thank you for coming on, my guy. Enjoy your food. Uh, sorry, the first time we've met or some of, you know, it's been so hostile, but didn't, didn't mean it to be all targeted at you. Um, any last, last comments for me before you step off? No, I mean, I'm, I'm always down to take the heat. That's why I'm sitting here talking to you guys. I mean, I talked to Zuma, what was it? Zuma, Temper, Kaisen, and Benjay Nassim. I had four guys attacking me. You know, here we got four guys again. It's always going to be one side versus another side, but I have no problem stepping up with my face out with a camera on, in person, privately, publicly, it doesn't matter to me. I'll always sit here and I'll speak the absolute highest level of communication and transparency that I possibly can. So I appreciate what you guys are all doing. I think it's really good that we have these conversations. I think it's awesome to have these podcasts. And I think it's great for the community because it gets people interested in Call of Duty. So before, appreciate you guys having me. Before you step off, again, I want to say you are an underrated player. When you, were, you got underrated placements, people talk shit a lot about you. Secondly, you had a great career in COD. Thirdly, I really hope you do break this pull-up record and bring one home for the COD community. And then with that, thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate that. Thanks, guys. Later, brother. All right, back to Austin. Um, hello, Austin. <laughs> What's up, Austin? Uh, let me fix the cans, but go, I mean, what? react. Yeah, no, I, just, I don't know. I think that might be it for me, too, because apparently I'm just lying. I don't know. Yeah, you're just well, a this fucking is my liar, point. bro. This, this, this uh, is my point, Austin. All right, like... It just sounds to me like, like everywhere, like you, everyone believes that Snoopy's got talent, right? No one's saying Oh yeah, that. for sure. Nobody's denying that. It's the same situation how we, we've, we've always had this, uh, you know, discussion. I even see Sid put it in the, in the chat. It's like a lot of people. It's think, been going off with the chat. What does Sid know? Well, Sib, no, nah, Sib talking about the script. Nah, he was Sib, talking Sib, about Sib, Sib's back in, Sib's back in beef in terms of, you know, 
everyone looks he's just at there for the driver. I respect him. Yeah, he, yeah, he, no, he's I mean, just vibing, bro. He's just vibing. I mean, I mean, uh, that's why I like Sid too, is because he just speaks on his mind. Obviously, he gets him fucked over sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're, you know, but. Dante, if you want to come in here, you know, come in here. By the way, if you want to come in, come in. I mean, he. I mean, he's saying like a lot of teams these days pick up players just because they shoot straight. I mean, he said Dante just said, "Let me get in this." Yeah, Dante people just said, don't want to build a good team anymore. That's the problem. Well, people first a... don't know how to build teams. A lot yeah. of people have never known how to build teams or how to make a team a team, and then now they're just not even trying to build teams. They're just trying to get talent and just run around and play eights. No, for the well, this is well, well. This has been my thing, Austin. That everyone's been trying to find the new sip, uh, uh, simp. Sorry, everyone's been trying to find that guy that came out and no, well, came from you know deemed deemed one of the greatest, comes in and actually is that person. Everyone's looking for that, but that's not how it works. It never has been. It, it, that's just like you one off, you know. Um, I I don't even know like how far you got with like the roster moves though, like. Was it like, did you guys like even speak with like Den Z or anyone like that about picking up someone else or anything like that? Or was it just I like did. Spoke with I had a lot of ideas both and times. Like were, but apparently, like, I don't know, the collective was against me. The collective. But that's, but, <laughs> but that, but that's, my, that's my point, Austin, is like, how far did it go? Did it feel like it was actually going to go somewhere or no? Uh... Without like out in any way. I caught course, on though. pretty quick. I caught on pretty quick to the that it was chalked and that Eric is the franchise player. I caught on pretty quick. I know how roster mania moves. I know when someone's moving weird. I know when they're talking weird. I'm pretty good at reading the room and conversations and I can I mean, tell right we, away. So that's yeah, why I mean, the we, whole preset to a sub thing was a possibility. Um so it I honestly didn't really get too far. It got far with me and the players. Like we talked a lot. But with the actual and then when it comes people. down, yeah, when it comes down to speaking to them, it's like, did they yeah. give you like the standard like one word response type shit? And then you're like, yeah, oh, yeah kind of. Like, I, I know. I just yeah. knew. I just knew. Why do you think did Priest you... is still there? Because like for my angle, it's like if they'd have told you, Austin, like, all right, we're keeping Snoopy 100 percent guaranteed. Like, would you have even wanted to stay? Like, the Priest of I mean, I'm I'm there. always <laughs> about playing. Like, I would have played for sure. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's the right route to go to mm -hmm. win right now, but um. I mean, I would have stayed. Like, I was going to stay if Preston was on a sub. I would have stayed if it was just me. And I'm not just going to, like, not play. But I did. I spoke my mind uh, maybe a little too much and told them that wasn't the right route because that's what I believe. And I'm trying to win. That's literally all I'm about. So uh, Dante is going to join right now as well, adding him into the call right now. I'm going to be honest and straight up. And I'm going to do what needs to be done to win. And that's just yeah. the way it is. And uh, Preston was aligned with me to my knowledge. Um and I guess they just wanted to keep him on the team. I don't know. Okay, here's Dante. He's a good player, obviously, so it makes sense. Let's get Dante. Dante, you here? Dante, you... yo, what's up? Yo, what's going on, man? What's up, bro? Uh, what's what's on your mind, brother? I just think <laughs> insane, honestly. In my opinion, especially from playing him, like from from what I was hearing Doug say, like even if. You bring in someone like Asim, right? Like, why is the drastic pull-off still the same? And what I have to say to that is that versus any top four team, any mistake you make, you rotate to the wrong hill, to me, that's unacceptable. Right? That's unacceptable. Clear-cut, unacceptable. Bottom line, there's that, that's not even the baseline of being a Call of Duty professional. If you cannot sit here and play the game for the, your whole day and rotate to the wrong hill when it comes to crunch time, that is insane to me. That's that, that's zero percent reliability, and if I'm playing with someone like that, like that, that that's just that's just that's just that's no words need to be said. That's insane. That's 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 honestly like you don't care if you someone does that with me. I honestly think you don't want to win. Like you're just fucking me over. You don't. You actually just don't want to win. I'm we're sitting, talking I'm February too. We're, like, we're talking mid February too. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah mid February. <laughs> no, mid February was when we didn't know the spawns. The rotating of the wrong hill yeah, was mid February later. is also insane, bro. Oh, and later. Oh, that's bro, first week of the <laughs> game. Never, bro, that's even worse. First week of the game, we should be sitting in a private match, drawing up fucking spawn points on fucking inside GG and fucking having circles on every single hill, having a fucking and, and also right. Even if obviously there's people who learn faster than others, that is okay. I've been I've teamed with people whose IQ has been probably higher than mine 
and they learn off the go. Like as soon as they get, get into a situation, they learn right after, right? Some people take 10 times to learn. Some people take five. Some people take one, right? That's fine, but you have to actually adjust to your capability of learning. If you know that you takes you 10 times to get something, write that shit down, fucking study that shit. It's just it's the same thing in school, right? You know what I'm saying? You study for a test. Some people don't have to study. They just know that shit top of their head. Some people have to study way more. So if you're someone like that, you have to make the extra effort to do that. And if you don't, it's simply you're not going to win. And every single mistake you make versus a top team, you're going to get punished. It doesn't matter who the fuck you have fucking Jesus on your team. You're not going to win <laughs> if you're going to the wrong hill or doing the wrong place. It doesn't matter. It honestly doesn't matter. Bro, you think fucking FaZe is doing that shit? Is, is there, is, uh, you're not I played winning. with them. No, they're not. You're not winning, bro. You're, you're never going to win. You're never going to win. It's, 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 it's physically... Mathematically impossible. It's impossible. And, it, and, it, and this was and this was my point, Dante. Like, like obviously we've all competed. Like we've played each other. We know how it works. You know what I'm saying? Like day in day out, you play day in day out the same maps over and over again. You know what I'm saying? It gets tedious, but guess what? You learn everything about that map. You know, you could learn the spawns on that map within like a week and a half of scrim, and even the first game, the first time the game comes out. You know what I'm saying? So. 100%. How, like, you know, we're talking months after the game, you know, how is it not like... Win. You don't want to yeah. win. You don't care and you don't want to win. It's as simple as that. There is no other explanation. You don't want to win. You don't. And if Especially you have someone like well, that on that like, team, it's um, just, you're never, it's just impossible, bro. Yeah. Well, uh, Dante, it's good about Slash, really. I, I, no, just I, quickly. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, like, because Snoopy, to me, it didn't seem like he showed much improvement in the four months. Like, on these categories, these problems were saying, the time that he was on the team to the time, like, today, doesn't seem to me like there was massive made. So really what Boston is saying is that that wasn't Snoopy's fault. He can improve. And it was Slasher and B-Sport Josh's fault. It's kind of like, do you know what I mean? That's what it seems like, yeah. So did you see much and, improvement? Uh, <laughs> like, did he improve in that time period, Slasher? Like, from when you joined the team to when you've left the team, like, did you see much evidence that he can be made a CDL caliber player and do you think that a different coaching structure and bringing in beans and penta is going to well, somehow make that happen? Maybe. I mean, I think I know what they're going to do now. I think they're just going to give them complete freedom to do whatever, which will make them maybe a little better. But in terms of winning and being in the top four, it's not going to happen more than likely. I, I mean, what I originally said was, I think Snoopy can 100% be a CDL caliber player. I think he just needs to learn his own style like he doesn't have a style of play that he even has right now like he needs to have his own game like hydra has his own game simp has his own game and then the coaching staff and the team tailor that into the game plan you know what i mean yeah that's like, probably, like he that's needs probably, time yeah. on his own yeah. to learn how to play cod on his own and then when he gets yeah. that then he could like go to that next level yeah but i, I think, think i, I, I I was gonna. I was just gonna say, like, you know, you know, it's how like everyone says, like, oh, shotty has got this style of play, Austin, where it's like, you know, he does these flashy clips, whatever, like that, and everyone's like, that's his style of play, but he needs to slow it down and then implement it into the team, and then you've seen it like happen, like over the course of like the, yeah, you know, major ones, dude, major the, like for instance, me and Dante, both they are players, but we have different styles. The way I'm gonna break a hill or something like that is not gonna be the exact same as Dante, but like we're gonna do the same idea necessarily, like take the route. But the way he may chow is different than the way I chow. Like, we have different styles to the game, and it's about steering that style into a team play, like, basically. Well, yeah, it's like I said, every, 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 everyone shoots straight. It's just about how you work with each other to do that. Like, yeah. New York, for yeah. example, they're, they're, they're going to be a faster breaking team to your team, Austin, in my opinion. Yeah. Because they, have to, they just have faster players. But agree. it's all about it's all about how they do that together, and if it works together, and all four people are on the same page, it's gonna work. And if all four people are not on the same page, if it's only three people on the same page, it's never gonna work ever. 100%. And I, I would definitely say like, <clears throat> like Snoopy, like just the narrative of him not obviously being able to be at that high level that he needs to be at, compared to people like Simp or Hydra. The main difference is is just. IQ and it's your ability to thought processes like certain situations and absolutely figure out the the right play in that moment. Like these top players that you guys watch, like Simp, all these people, like their IQ is not just because oh like I take I I'm here I take this route. Their their ability to actually 
thought process something and he's already five steps ahead and you're still on the first one can i you know what i mean so it's well, they're not even thinking in game because they just it's natural at that point i've been in yeah. this situation yeah. i do this yeah it's just constant like that's when what you're I, honestly at your best is when you don't even think <laughs> mid map most of the that's time what, that's, what, doing... that's what i was gonna say with like scrims and stuff like that like that's how like that's what separates the top teams from the lesser teams is like you're already thinking three steps four steps ahead before you've even made your play because you know that's how you've practiced that one play so you know what to do straight after that yep. like you already know dante like if you get a clean if you get two free dead you know where to set yourself up for the next rotation for the next set of kills for this this and that and that's why you guys are you know in the top four team uh, talks you know what i'm saying yeah. And that's that's what separates you guys from the other teams that are like, I mean, like I said, I've I've said it multiple times. I still see teams when I look at the minimap in the league, they still don't know where some people are spawning. Now, to me, that's a bit embarrassing. As you know, I, I have a thought too as well. Yeah, for, and a question it. for you could this go to Trey, Dante, or Slasher? Um, how big is it to play with intelligent players? coming up in order to develop your own game knowledge and game sense for in Stoopy's example right he has the opportunity here to play with Priesta play with Slasher but now he's robbed of that opportunity instead now he's gonna be playing with arguably I mean not arguably but lesser caliber players you've world ch two world champs so it's I mean it's like arguably I mean, to me, so like how big, how big of a development piece is that playing with high caliber players uh, early on in your career I mean I think it's definitely huge I mean I can even speak for myself when I was teaming with Lamar like he was way more fund fundamentally sound than I was. His IQ was higher than mine. Um, his intangibles were a lot more than mine. All I had on him was what raw, raw gunny and talent. You know what I mean? So I mean, I, I I can literally compare myself to Snoopy if you add that. Um. So, and actually, I just picked up and actually learned. Actually, AG for example, Pred, his high, his his ability, the thought process, the speed of it was higher than mine. In Vanguard, it was higher than mine. In MW2, it was higher than mine. But now, like, my third year now, I'm, I'm actually caught up. And I know what to do now. And I can actually build on that. So I think it's very important. You need something like that. Because without that, I'd be nothing. Honestly. I, I wouldn't be in the league. So it's very important to have. Austin, I mean, that goes, to yeah. I mean, I was going to say, too, like, for me, when I first came up, like obviously I had Mad Cat, you know, <laughs> that, I had Marky B, Mad Cat, you know, there's some, there's some characters and stuff like that. And then, you know, I've always had the same amount of gas that Sib has for Lamar too. I obviously never got to play with Slasher. He goed me a few times, to be honest with you. I could have made him a better player. What but, the? Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, like with Lamar, he made, he, he made sure, you know, because I'm a European player, you know, our comms go a bit crazy, you know, if you ever hear about, you know, at my time with Zuma and stuff like that, like, you know, our comms, they get a bit hectic at EU comms, that's just how they are with, like, with Lamar too, it, even though I was, like, a solidified, like, veteran at the time, my team with Lamar, he still made me a better player, and that's what helped me in terms, and I know Dante can probably help, like, you know, Dante, if a, if a younger player came up and teamed with you now, you could help them out. 100%. Because of, because of how you got, like, learned and stuff like that from other people that helped you out. So it's just a big, it's just a massive, like, it, like, goes around in circles types, type shit. And especially with Austin, and, you know, Austin's been doing this. Austin is the teacher, you know, and yeah. obviously mm -hmm. if Austin couldn't, I don't know, like you said, Snoopy didn't have a style and obviously it didn't work with you, Austin. And, you know, obviously, I think you should be in the league as well as ASIM and stuff like that. And, like, some players just don't work with some people, and that's fine. Oh, that's you know? true, yeah. Even like, even, back to, definitely true. even back to the, the communications, like, we, <clears throat> as pro players, we watch. We study the game, and I can tell you for a fact, I've watched Boston's every single match. I've listened to every single listening. I can tell if Snoopy's comms are complete garbage. If I'm, it's it's not even it's not even it's completely garbage, and it needs to be better. Like, I can say for myself, my first year coming in, my comms were not good. They were not good. But after that first year, maybe that first year, like obviously I could still hold my own without those comms and still make instinct instinct like my natural instinct was good, but my comms need to be better. So 
I we, we, made effort. We were, fr- we were friends yeah. on your come up, Sim. Yeah, yeah, my come up. We shit. Were, we, me, me, shit. I'm taking, I'm taking random timings, not letting my teammate behind me know that I can, they could be behind me, and now my teammate that's behind me is getting fucked over because I can't simply come like, yo, I'm taking this route. He could be here. He could be there. Yo, I'm doing this. They could be ready. The process of elimination. I don't hear, I don't hear any of that. I don't hear any process of elimination from Snoopy in the comms. And this, and this, gonna, uh, this was my point as well. Like, I understand. <laughs> Bear in mind, like I know it sounds like I've been trashing him. I'm just saying in the CDL, it is a very cutthroat, like, shh, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's very cutthroat. You see players get dropped left, right, and center. They lose their jobs. They don't get it back during challenges, stuff like that. Like, the shit we've seen or heard is, like you said, Dante, like, you know, it's <laughs> inexcusable. You know, if that, that happened sure. on top, if that happened on top teams, guess what? You get dropped. Unacceptable. Like, clear as day, you get dropped. And I know Austin ain't rotating to no wrong hill. I know Austin's comms are great. And guess what? Yeah, I would drop myself. You, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you got dropped. And I know Asim's comms. You know, Asim's a very hyper play. He's very fast. You know, and he does very well at what he does for how well, like, for how fast he does it. He gets he dropped. He earned that spot, bro. He fucking earned that spot. Bro, he earned oh, it right. and got it taken away straight away. Like, that. For no reason. And he probably played the best at the land event, which makes no sense to me. Agreed. And that and that's what and that's that term they use of unified. You know? Doug 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 likes saying the unifiedness of, of the team now. And they unifiedly agreed that we're gonna drop the best player. And everyone agreed. You know, okay. Yeah, everyone agreed. Austin, uh, you know, I think yeah, I think whatever you said it's... didn't I think whatever you yeah. said, you know, that <laughs> I don't know. I guess I'm just talking out of my ass, bro. I don't know. That that is just <laughs> wild. I got I got I think everyone I think everyone lied to I got to start wearing a wire in some of these conversations. <laughs> 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 I got a question for for whoever here wants to answer it, but considering they I mean, probably Austin, but considering they dropped you, right? You performed, you've led, you did played well. Considering that Boston made the decision to drop you, drop some coaches, and kind of swap out the team, do you think that kind of hurts the image of Boston Breach as an org now and makes it less of a destination for players to want to go to? Uh, I don't think it really sways in any other way, to be honest. I think it could go either way. I mean, what if after this they start actually thinking? You know what I mean? Like, you could, what if someone tries to join and be like, okay, it really just some bad decisions, but. Because, like, I mean, what if they do go on and, like, they're doing better or something and all of a sudden, you know, someone on the team is the absolute Don Juan, like they're going to attract people to play with that player. If they don't and they just continue down the same road, they don't have, you need players to attract players. Like in my opinion, yeah. you need I mean, like, like someone on the but, team that someone's going to be like, I want to play with that guy. Yeah. I was going to say like money's nice, but like it ain't just going to go there and get piss slammed for like, you know what I'm saying? Like it's not. Yeah, that's... I'm taking less money to play with a top player than going to get paid in my opinion. So that's what that's what I did. Yeah. I'm so sure. like I, I could have been on Boston, but Boston was the only other team that reached out to me besides New York. Hmm. Boston was giving me a significant higher pay, but I chose you're taking the less money to play with the good team every Correct. day of the week. So like, yeah, they got to have a player that people want to go play with and I guess we'll see the rest of the season if they have that. I mean, I just, I just think it's insane because half the year is already gone, brother. Oh yeah, it is. Yeah, that, I mean, that, <laughs> that, that was that, that that was literally my point. Is that we like we're saying four months as if it's like you know we were only one ended in August. a long time, bro. Yeah, so and in, like, champs but, is not in August, my brother. Like, <laughs> but like that's my point. Is like we don't have time. Four months is a long time in the CDL. Like it really is. Like that is that's two majors, like complete majors, and like we're coming up to major three now, which kind of solidifies. You know, wherever you finish a major three, kind of solidifies your your chances at champs. I will say and... though, they probably have their best chance now because they have an easier split coming up. Our first our first two splits are like the hard ones, and the last two are the easier ones. So oh. if they're gonna put it together, now is the chance. <laughs> I don't know. I just hate the fa- I I just hate the 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 calmness of you know. Oh, we're, it, it's only f- he's only been in the league four months. Like we're only four months in. Like four months in. That's half the year gone. You know, it's only year, only four majors. That's it's scary. Like really scary when you put it in perspective. Like 
you know, dead last four months in. Like, that's scary to think about. Like, I'm sat there thinking, like, fucking hell, are we even going to be at champs? Yeah, I mean... To even have that thought is abysmal. Yeah, for sure. Shouldn't even be at that. Yeah. Fuck. So, I mean, Austin, like, what are you thinking next for you? I've seen Arsa <laughs> he's obviously... The world I mean, champion, he's off surge, he's gone down to challenges. So that I mean, worst game. case scenario, he just takes the year off. There's what, f top, f what is it, eight teams that are going to probably make a change out this season? So, I mean, surely he fucking gets on one of those. Surely. <laughs> surely. Yeah, um, for right now, um, I'm just kind of chilling. Uh, going to keep playing, obviously doing as much as I can in case some of these teams who bomb out. <laughs> Want to make a change? Um... I don't know. You Watch the matches every day. Maybe awesome. start streaming a little bit. Get in the gym. That's really all I've thought about doing. Because it's still pretty fresh for me. So, I don't know. Awesome. Do you I know bet Spanish, you start training for Doug's pull-up records. So you can... <laughs> I will say, yeah. Doug has a way stronger mental than me when it comes to that stuff. He's a psychopath in a good way, if that makes sense. Like, he's one of the few that could actually pull that type of shit off. I don't think I could. Beast. Austin, do you know Spanish, by the way? I know a team that could use you. <laughs> <laughs> I did take four years of Spanish in high school. Vamos! <laughs> okay, uh, baby. I need, I need like a couple weeks to relearn. <laughs> Austin, 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 that's probably one team I'd say don't do it to yourself. Oh, my God. Jesus, bro. Fuego, fuego, fuego. Afuera, afuera, afuera. You kill uh, it, Honestly, though, like, you know. Oh, I can't Appreciate stop thinking it. about the ro February, bro. That is insane. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Get, the, that was the big thing for me. We ain't even giving a chance to even break this motherfucker, bro. Yeah. We ain't even giving a chance to stop. We ain't even we in my head, head, just like start shooting our, in the air and let niggas kill us. All point. our practice up to that point was a waste, in my opinion. I was like, holy shit. Thank God I figured this out. But And, and to be fair, to be fair, people do black out. We've all had our fair shares of quote unquote blacking out but that is not blacking out that is simply i can't even say no, it honestly no, i i it's a skill issue no nah, but not not even that like i feel like that's just not like one in it i don't i don't know i know it sounds weird that's what like, it was like to me that's what it felt like you, to me you, you know what it, you know what it, like that's what i mean when i say like it's like feels like it's it just not one in it like i've never had i I've never had anyone on my team that's rotated to the wrong hill, like, when the game's been out, like, ever. Only time you rotate to the wrong hill is on Mercado, because there's fucking seven different hills at the beginning of the game. <laughs> <laughs> the only time it's acceptable. But even then, like, fucking study that shit. You know, it's, it's baseline. It's, it should be, you should, you, you should practice I mean, yourself on stuff like that. Surely we're playing rank play every day. I mean, we're fucking scrimming every day. We should, I assume you guys play, like, you know, minimum two sets, sometimes three. You play the map three times. Like... It's in your head. You do it every single day. Probably take one day off a week. Sometimes not even that. It depends how much you want to grind. Hundred like, percent. That was the main point, though. If we were truly like saying shit from the camp, like that would have came out, and it did not. So, yeah. yeah but I just don't like that rat term getting thrown around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, the, and then, the, and then the other thing that came out is the S and D strat, which you're saying came out after. And I want to hear this. What, what, what was this? What was this S and D strat? They were saying, like, we were forgetting our own S&D strats. Oh, right. Wow, that is insane. <laughs> wow. We were forgetting. Uh, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the, I, know I, know, I, know, I, I know Austin, like, I know, I know sometimes it's been, like, you know, an, an MLG Anaheim. We've, we've had a few too many AMFs, you know. Yeah, and yeah. yeah. We're, you know, we'll talk about some, some fucked up shit that's happened. But guess what? It never goes anywhere. Like, if you truly wanted it to get out, guess what? Our, our friend Ben J. Nassim, our friend Tommy Zuma, you know, if you really wanted it to go out, it would go out, you know? And the fact that it took, in fact, it took from February and then a, a bit, a while after that, for it to come out now after you and Asim been dropped makes no sense whatsoever how you guys would even do that. Wait, yeah. how would, um, when, when was this? When was what? Please don't say major two. Forgetting the S and D show, please don't say major two. Surely it was major one. It might have been versus you guys. Major two. 
What's up? Ah, oh, hell nah. Ah, <laughs> oh, hell nah. Hey, nah. Motherfuckers need to get their phone out, pull, pull up a Google Doc, draw some circles on that motherfucker, and look at it before they go to bed. Wake Excuse up, look at it. Excuse me? Cause... <laughs> My brother. Er, wait, My er, brother. Early in the, in the that, uh, go, go, go ahead, go straight. Go. I'll say I was, just, I was just gonna say that, like, even that then, like, that's not one in it to me. That's not a winner. I, I was gonna ask in the, in the, let's say, in, hypothetically or truthfully, in the NYSL camp, are, are spawns something that are tested early on? Was that tested? 100%. 100%. New map comes out, we got that shit fucking with a bunch of circles running on that motherfucker. Hills already known, everything. You run around the map, perfect, right? And I just. I, forgetting it, forgetting strats is crazy because, well, first off, I won't sit here and act like we don't forget some of the shit or we don't make mistakes. We do make mistakes. And Everyone that, makes mistakes. That, for that sure. is going to happen. Well, you have to, you have to create some sort of foundation and baseline to where these are mistakes that you don't make. Because once you get into the game, mistakes are going to happen. You have four people trying to trying to do what they're doing and work together, mistakes are going to happen. So, like, if you just make the, you make the bottom of the barrel mistakes of not forgetting your own strat, like, it's already chopped. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather sit there and know the strat and not execute the strat properly because for whatever reason, right? That's what I'm saying. Maybe, like, I, everyone makes mistakes. Like, I make tons of mistakes every map. Everyone does. But, like, there's just some mistakes that aren't even real where it's, like, that's not even a real mistake, bro. Yeah, I, like, not, there's not nothing real. to talk I, about here. I, th I think the mistakes that you guys are talking about, though, are like the ones where, like, you know, uh, I overchowed or something like that. You yeah, know yeah, you yeah. Got, ego you got, you got, or like, yeah, like, ah, oh, shit, like, I should have chowed that. Or, yeah, yeah, oh, I shouldn't have crossed there. I was weak or like, ah, oh, fuck, like, should have put down a trophy. That's and a mistake then, in game. In yeah, a game, a mistake, mistake, you're in bound game. to make so many mistakes, like, just the yeah. way the fast pace, like, Austin. How quickly you die. Motherfuckers ain't even doing step one like, this motherfucker. Interesting yeah, question. Like, how do you know it's it's different? How do you know it's forgetting versus execution? Um, well, execution is something that you consistently go over and that when you play, it's the same thing every single time. So for an example, if I have a strat with New York, right, we study the strat, we go through the strat to make sure it works, and if something doesn't work, we adjust. Right? Okay. So now we are playing for however fucking much money it is versus a big crowd. We've tested this over and over and over and over and watched it back over and over and over and talked about it over and over <laughs> and over and over. And then you get in the game and it's not executed. That's unacceptable. Mm. Regardless if you know what I mean. So like yeah. that, that in itself is also unacceptable. And forgetting something, you shouldn't. Forgetting something is just is also insane. Like, yo, I forgot you played here, motherfucker. I've been sitting here in the same spot for fucking three months. <laughs> Fuck you, mean? I for you forgot I played here. Like what? Like that is crazy. Like, that is insane. Like you know what I mean? So like they it, both both are unacceptable. Even for me, like I we I sit there and, and watch our matches back. Even like versus Optic, right? For example, Optic, P, fucking Map Four Invasion, we lost, right? Everyone's talking about oh, NY so. Out slays, but they don't get a hill time, right? Well, that's because we can't hold a fucking setup, so we have to rebreak and rebreak and rebreak and rebreak. So we have to make our job twice as hard because we can't hold a actual setup, which is I mean, ultimately going to expose us, which it did. I mean, I'm sure you have the, you know, the classic. You know, you don't. You have the yo. Let's do this. Let's do that. And you guys instantly know what it is. You know, yo. Let's do that one play where we do this. Like you two go over there, and it's like everyone knows what they're doing without, like, without even thinking. Because you've done yeah. it, that's what you practice day in, day yes, out. Yes, that is what practice is for. And if you can't do that, then practice is completely pointless and you shouldn't be practicing. Got it. Bottom line. Got it. What, what are we here for? Honestly. Yeah. What, 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 what are we here for? I'm just wasting my time. Just getting on the toy, just to go through the motions. That is the worst. As a competitor, that is the worst, that is the worst feeling. Just coming into practice and just going through the motions. Hopefully, you get better. You just... You just your spot is just based off hope. Your job is based off hope. That's that is one of the, the worst feelings that ever. You just that's, fucking mind, so just it, leave it up to God at that point. That's what I'm saying. The, the CDL Hopefully, so, uh, Hopefully the CDL's so get cut the strap. For, the CDL's so cut for it. Like like, you know, there's players that will go into the league and then boom, they've had their chance. It didn't work. Guess what? You're back in challenges and no word of a lie, you you probably ain't gonna get your spot back because of the narrative.
hundred percent. Yeah, you have to capitalize on on stuff like that, and it's for everybody, even for me. Like if I'm sitting there fucking shit up, bro, I'm I'm gone. I ain't performing, not being a good time. I'm gone, bro. Apparently, when you're a franchise doing? tag, though, when you're a franchise tag, doesn't matter. If yeah, you, you, you forget, it doesn't even matter you, what you do. Shit, you staying there forever, my boy. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, you gonna keep losing. <laughs> I always gonna keep losing. Like if Boston keeps him, you know what I mean. If he doesn't get, if he doesn't get better, then they're just gonna be a shit. They're gonna be shit org, shit team, shit placings. Simple as that. Yeah. Well, uh, any final, final, final thoughts from Dante, Austin? <clears throat> any final thoughts you guys want to say out to everyone? Uh, I just, I just want Austin to be in the league, man. Honestly, he deserves it. That's, that's my opinion, and and that's just. That's just what, what I think. Yeah, those are my final thoughts as well. I just want me to be in the league. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nah, I mean, obviously, uh, yeah, I just wanted to have some more transparency. I wanted to hop on here and talk a little bit. Appreciate you guys I appreciate talking. It, man. Yeah, man. You know? thank, you, thank you guys for coming on. Uh, Dante, hope you, I think you play this weekend. Hopefully you guys do well. Uh, yep. Yeah, have have a good have a good weekend and Versus go Lamar fucking well. a baby. I'm fucking ooh. oh no. Relax, relax, bro. Relax, bro. <laughs> relax, bro. Relax, man. And then Austin, Austin, glad you came on. I appreciate you hopping on. Uh, yeah, man, get your ass back in the league. Stay stay warm, man. I someone somebody is gonna somebody's gonna warm. need you, bro. Someone's gonna need yeah, you pretty I'll soon. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, you know, some, if it, some, some if it, I've seen this before. Uh, Listen, Austin, if you ever need someone to play ranked play, I get very lonely in my, in my <laughs> old age. So. Aren't you playing at, like, mean, super early hours, though? Anything for you, Austin. Anything Any, for you. Oh, okay. Nah, okay. Nah, nah, he'd be <laughs> up early. I'd be, I'd be waking up sometimes early. I'd be just see Trey. Yeah. yeah. On, yeah. on game. We'll see, I'm though. Like, I'm definitely down know. to play. I've been playing a little bit yeah. more recently. Austin, gym at, gym at 6.30 in the morning, back home, 8 a.m., stream up. Come on. Okay, that's respectable. That's tippable as hell, yeah. bro. Yeah, honestly, it's tippable. I wish I could fucking follow that shit. Fuck All right, fellas. It was right, a pleasure. Doing, you're doing great. Much love, uh, much love. Have a good rest of your day. Appreciate you. Sure you. Later. Later. You guys have a good one. Later, bro. Have a good Thank day. You. W's in the chat. Guys, W's. We need some whibs and we need some washers, man. We need them all in the chat right now. Show some love to Jesus. the guys for coming on, man. That's You don't get that kind of love every day. You don't get that kind of love every day, man. Jesus. Let me fix the cam. What a time. Could you guys hear the Sib smoking along with this? Yeah, <laughs> bro. That, that shit was hilarious. <laughs> oh, my God. I was going to tell him, but I thought people in the stream. Yeah, no, no but, uh, do you know do you guys, you know who Juan is or Valero? He go, he's a videographer. You know that is? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. Juan said he's in the Uber right now to go fix that shit for him right now. Don't worry. We're getting it addressed, <laughs> yeah, chat. No. <laughs> yeah, no. If, if Dante needs a cash app, you know, I'll send him a couple bucks to get that, that fire alarm sorted. We'll get a new battery in that bitch. Um, sounded like a rapper's house right now, you know. <laughs> I've had those people, those, those fire alarms be going off, so. Yeah, man. Well, now, honestly, that was very informative, mm -hmm. in my opinion. We found out a lot of stuff in terms of what's going on in the Boston Breach. The higher ups obviously believe in Snoopy, and who are we to, you know, sit here and say we can slate him all we want, we can say that it wasn't the right choice or whatever like that, but they play, and we'll see how well the team's doing. Um, we had B Sport Josh Nero earlier, um, basically saying um, he was an advocate. You know, when when you asked like whose decision it was, Ace. Uh, basically, it was a whole thing decision that he was gross, and you know they were decided to bring him up at the set like all together. So that's where that decision comes from. And yeah, I mean, you know, I I'll ridicule, I'll slate anything. It's like when A said that Boston got better when they picked the base, and they didn't. They kind of stayed the same. It's like when Doug said Snoopy joined Boston, they got sixth at champs. Like, well done. There's eight teams at champs. You know what I'm saying? Like. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> it's that's my point with that aspect of things um it's yeah when you say it like that and you look at it it's like oh yeah they did and then you actually sit there and deep it it's like not really and yeah. then sid coming on helping us out you know i like like, you know, everyone has a thing about Dante, but listen, he says it how it is straight to the point, you know? Yeah, no BS. No BS with him. No BS. Again, I appreciate I appreciate Austin coming on, right? I, I got a, you know, we were, we were texting a little bit in the last 
couple of weeks actually about him coming on. When was a good time? He's you know he was moving out from Boston and stuff like that, so he wanted to find a good time to do so. Um, so I appreciate Austin for coming on. Doug really appreciate him for coming on as well. Uh, it's very tough, honestly. Like again, I'm I've gotten a lot of hate online. Trey, I know you've gotten a lot of hate. Rab doesn't get any hate, so I'm not going to include him in this. A lot of hate, man. It's really tough when you put yourself right in the fucking bullets of battle. So big ups to, to Doug, even though, you know, I may disagree with some of the things he said and he was playing politician, but kudos to him for staying in front of that fire with all the chat and everyone coming at him. That takes balls. So, man, much love to Doug, Censor Martin. And again, we, I want him to break that record. I want him to fucking crush the shit, bring one home for the boys and himself and all that training and effort and then yeah dante one of the realest ones in the game just absolute absolute one of the realest ones just doug, the day doug, doug might doug might have the best media training of all time nah he's elite bro that was impressive from doug man the way he was finessing those questions moving that shit around oh yeah he'd take the question and then he'd start on one point so that by the time he got to actually having to answer the original question you forgot a question yeah you, you wanted to nah, ask him a new question about the new point he just made exactly yeah what a, what yeah, a you know, I asked, her, I asked him to answer my question. He didn't answer it. And I moved over to Ace's question, didn't answer that, but gave us the most PR responsible time. And I, I felt like my question was answered. <laughs> 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 Yo, that was, some, that was some mastermind shit out of him, man. No BS. Bro, he's, he, bro, he is unbelievable. I'm telling you, that guy could... That, Narcissist, that's what he is. Narcissist, gaslight, the best gaslight in the league he is. Honestly, yeah. fuck me. Guys, people in the chat, do it. Are you not entertained? Don't check W. Yeah, follow the bloody stream. If you haven't followed the stream yet, what are you actually doing? Are you we not do this every week. We do this every Monday. Every week. Every, every, week, every, like... every Monday we do this. Monday? Shit. Oh, well, you're forgetting about Fridays? Are we get, are forgetting about Fridays too? <laughs> yeah, but that's, no, but we, we, that's, that's where we don't do. This we're we're like, not not as yeah, intense. Yeah. yeah. The, 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 yeah. If you this, want this drama, we're, if you want we drama, we do a little sign on Friday. <laughs> yeah, we do a little sign on Friday if you guys want to tune in. But Monday is where they get money. If you These want the, the drama, Monday. On Monday. Come Monday for the drama. <laughs> Come Monday for all of it. Fridays we have the the match pre-show where we go over the matches, preview them, give predictions, and it's much more competitive direct matches base but this is the drama this is the t this is the tactical rab session the tray and ace session where we're just spewing the best of the best guys wope check episode what is this 15 now we're moving we're building shout out to dante shout out to austin shout out to doug center martin shout out breaking point shout out rab shout out trey shout out all of us man we had one of the best shows best viewership i think of all time on twitch for us W. Oh, sure. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for being here. Hopefully, we can continue this on, bring more people on, settle more beef, settle more dramas, and just continue on this absolute amazing trajectory that because of you, you've gotten us on. So, from A, from me, Ace, from Rab. Oh, shit. And I, I fucking set a raid going. We've got five seconds till we go. Oh, my God. I wanted to raid Doug. Bye, 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 bye. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bye, Goodbye. bye, 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 bye. <laughs> oh, no, I can. I can...